if you look from the side, you're looking at the curvatures. If you're looking from this one, now you're looking like we cut you in slices, the rotation, that rotation will go away too. That causes all sort of pelvic girdles problems, mm -hmm. which I try to stay out of. So the yeah. twisting is just to disengage your back. Just it's to disengage. Let... It just says, let it go. Okay. I tell her we call it dancing. She said, yeah, my husband will never go dancing with me. We should ask him to do something. Yes. Uh, I just Sit watched these again. crazy people on earth in that talent oh, God, yes. fast salsa. Yes, so uh, they're giant and flexible, and I'm like, yes. I don't know, how do they do it? So, right here is that center of, 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 of where we're at. So now, let's go back to this picture. Right here. So now we have the head, the jaw, the hyoid bone, all the muscles. The jaw, we put the cotton rolls between it. Yeah. And we open and close a few times. Yes. Now right now, mm -hmm. you're in a little water bed. Yeah. Your muscles are relaxing, your jaw is floating wherever it wants to go. Mm -hmm. You're still disengaged completely from your teeth. Yes. We'd like you to be able to engage your teeth and stay in the same spot. But if you take that out for a minute and bite, it try it. Bad. You're going to yeah. feel like your teeth hit wrong. Yeah. yeah. And so now, this, and why are we doing this project? There's all these people who are saying occlusion has nothing to do with TMJ. Yeah. How stupid. What do we do 2,000 times a day? Two. Two. Three. Swallow. Swallow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we swallow, if we swallow correctly, mm -hmm. we bite our teeth together and we swallow. Bite together, swallow. A little difficult? Not normal. Mm -hmm. Bite. Swallow. He's having a hard time. Mm -hmm. The two most basic things we do with our jaw mm -hmm. is swallow and breathe. Yeah. And it's not working right for either. And how many of you have scalloped tongue? You have a scalloped tongue? You do, I know. Just let it right. No, just don't stick it out. It. Just open. Don't even stick it out. Yeah. Just open. It is. Yeah, That's a little great. bit. Let's see yours. Yours will be worse. Open. Yeah, you've got a huge scalloped tongue. Mm -hmm. Your tongue is always between your teeth, making an appliance. Mm -hmm. Ah, but what does that mean? If your tongue is between your teeth to make an appliance, it pulls your hyoid bone up. Mm -hmm. If you pull your hyoid bone up, you have stretched the super and infrahyoids. Do they like to be stretched? No. These infra no, no, so no, now no, what no, you no. do is you compensate. But that's good because that's what muscles do. So we compensate by bringing our head like this. Mm -hmm. Now everything's in balance, but now we're looking at the ground. So now we rotate on our atlas axis and we have a problem. Good. And we have a forward head posture, not telling them to push the chin back. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't tell people to push their chin back because the jaw belongs forward. I've Did been working on that with uh, Chris Consolo. Oh, yes, she's swallowing, like swallowing with uh, vegetables. He's having a hard time. Swallowing with yeah. what? With some uh, carrots or crackers. Yeah. Okay, so let's go and talk about where you should stand. What is the do you have a good posture? Well, you know you're off right to left. If it's anyone, it's Jenny and all of us to have a better <laughs> <good one. laughs> yeah, Your heel against the wall. Because she's already. And then we're going to put your shoulders against the wall. We're going to make your head straight. Now, you should have two fingers, so push your neck against my fingers. But don't tip your head down. Now push your back against my hand, because you only should have that amount there. Now push this here again. And now we're just going to level your shoulders and push you back. Did you ever stand like that? So that would be hard. Okay. So. Take your mask off just for a second. Open for back or take the yeah, for back. Is it easier to stand like that now? Now you got two fingers. Just back is back. Almost perfect. Mm. It's easier just because your jaw is not in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. But what we teach everybody, you had kids, you know Kegels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretend you have a really full bladder. Mm -hmm. You're about to lose it. Okay. Any okay. second. It is so close. Oh my God, you can't believe it. <laughs> Squeeze your perineal muscles and your butt so you don't do it. Mm -hmm. Now you're perfect. Perfect. Most of our patients are women, right? I tell them you got to do Kegels all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. Driving, eating, walking. You have to, if you're going to build something, mm -hmm. you build it from the top down to the bottom up. Yeah. So oh, wow. you want to get this right. Yep. 
And if you have perineal problems, are those the worst patients you ever see? They have pelvic floor specialists Maybe because so. nobody wants and, and and to do it right is really hard. I remember Liz saying, like, if you're clenching here, you're clenching here as well. That's what she yeah. says. So, mm -hmm. so you can, if you want to do things, tighten those up. They actually kind of feel good in there. Mm -hmm. Now try it again, tighten those out, and just do the kegels. So this is right, but now you got three fingers instead of two. Yeah. Three fingers instead of two. So all we did is disengage the jaw. Of course, now you're also way off center here, and your head's took away to the side. Yeah, my head only went to the left. Okay, so it's, it's, so we'll show you other things to do. Yeah. But this is just every single patient. I, the reason I go to have two-hour consults. It's because you go through this. Everything's important. <laughs> I don't know what to leave out. Right. If I was smarter, I'd just tell them what they needed to know. But is I, this I don't know. Is the exercise you said to do where you, you have them push into the wall like this and do Kegels there? No, I just have, I have them stand against the wall yeah. and now do Kegels. They're two different exercises though. The one exercise is just to stand against the wall so you know what straight is. Because mm -hmm. you didn't know. How long have you been teaching physical therapy? Yeah, long time. And you don't know what it feels like to be straight. Now, anytime they find a wall, all they have to do, this is straight. Yeah, yeah. It gives them a baseline. Yeah. <laughs> and if you push the chin back, it, does, it feels, here, go back against the wall. She's I know she's dying to see. Now we're going to push your chin back. Doesn't that feel good? And all the physical therapists want people to push their chin back. We do that all the time. We tell them to do it. I know, it makes me crazy. The first thing I tell them when they come to my office, don't push your chin back. Yeah. That's why I teach them against the wall, because they can feel it. They're not pushing the jaw back. I don't want the jaw back. Okay. That in interferes with your breathing. So what, what we've learned is that if your head goes forward, your jaw goes back. If your jaw, if your head goes back, your jaw, jaw will compensate and go forward. I'm going to tell you, I think that's true backwards. Yeah. Because the most so important thing head, we do is head forward head postures to open our airway. Yeah, but it'll it'll bring the mandibles back. That's a, it's a compensation, but right. it's opening the airway is what we want to do. If you bring your, if you bring your jaw forward, you open your airway. That's right. That's that's what like I'm telling. So some of the patients when they go forward, they actually their mouth is actually open while they're talking to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when I push them back, I actually like their jaw better because now it's not either clicking or not in pain. Because when it's forward, it's kind of the disc right. is at very precarious so position. I want their head back, mm -hmm. but I don't want their head back by pushing their chin back. Okay. So it's just another way to look at it. We can get their heads back. Back, okay. Right. So all I do with this, this whole exercise is so they have a baseline that they can so feel. So this is what we give them, is chin cups, which is this. It's just rotating kind of yeah, head. So when you send so your you patients to bed, probably tell them not to do your chin cups. <laughs> and I'll tell them do kegels because it all, again, stand against the thing. Feet together. Feet together. And just... Do the perineal, the kegels, and the and tighten your butt cheeks. And the nice side of it is she have to disengage her jaw too. No, you can keep them together or apart. It won't matter. If we disengage the jaw, it's easier. When you have an equalizer, it's mm -hmm. easier. Now the advantage to this, how old are you now? 45. You know what happens to two-thirds of the women by the time they're 55 to 60? Incontinence. Yeah, they end up in diapers. Yeah. You see all the commercials on TV for diapers? Guess what the cure? When you're young enough to do it, that you do not to need diapers. Kegels. Kegels. So you have two choices. You can do you can do diapers later when you're older, or you can do kegels now. Which would you rather do? Kegels, kegels now. now. Kegels. Now the good news is, if you watch the commercials, they now make sexy diapers. I know. They have so <laughs> many commercials for sexy diapers for women that you don't see under their dresses. They're still diapers. Yeah. And sometimes people have other issues, so you have to be a little. Careful, but that's what I threaten people with. And then I ask them, does your mother have, have problems? And they always say yes. But if they have posture problems, most of their mothers do. If they have posture problems, they have incontinence problems. Yeah. And it's because they have weak peri perineal muscles, weak pelvic floor muscles. What if your occlusion, you know, one of the things that I did was I expanded with an elf and then I kind of stopped treatment. Okay. So my teeth don't perfectly fit, they don't interdigitate. So when, the, when you start to close, as soon as your first contact comes into contact, yeah. your muscles adapt to avoid it. And you can't even find the first contact. Yeah. 
So let's put you on a time, you'll be the client. Okay. And we'll show you what your job does where you're at since we know you have a problem. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. So I, I worked with Dr. Crow for a while mm -hmm. and, and then um, we, we got to a point where he had me on a lower appliance for like two years. Wow. I ate with it. I liked it. That vertical helped my back. My back felt better with that height. Um, no, I was telling him that I, my, I like the vertical that the lower appliance that I worked with him gave me. I did it for two years, and then he started taking it down, and then my back started hurting. Well, you can stay there. Okay. Have to move. It's affordable. So, um, anyway. You use all sorts of times, right? I went to I went to John Kelly. Um, okay, so he had to go on one of these. Yeah. What are you applying? He That's showed me. He it. showed me. How to use the tens with a patient, but I only saw him once do it, and I've never felt it. Is the tens just for pain control, or are you looking no. for like the tens is an ultra low frequency tens? Uh huh. So it pulses every second and a half, ninety seconds. So this when is a you, different kind of tens then. This is a. It's a this is the same as the one Doctor Kelly uses. It's not a standard tens. This is ultra low frequency. Okay. Okay. Standard tens is usually two, two to two thousand frequency. Or it's a more low. medium frequency one. So this, is this, is this is ultra low. Okay. This is ultra low frequency. Let's see. So it's to what the reduce uh, what the hypertonicity the if it's not for TMJ pain. We do we do lots of different things with it. At least that's what Doctor Kelly does. Yeah. Right. Open yeah. your mouth just a little bit. Ah. Ah. So if you Maybe put your finger on her chin, the... put your finger on her chin. I'm open, right? Just open a little bit. Mm -hmm. You feel how the jaw moves each oh, time? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's going so like simultaneously, it. every time it contracts, every pulse, oh, yeah. you're relaxing all 16 mandibular elevators. Wow. What they're doing is they're going to contract and relax. Contract and relax. When the muscle contracts, the waste products built up in the muscle get pushed out. When it relaxes, you bring in fluid. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna, I'm gonna say, naturally relax the muscles by increasing the blood flow in and the waste product out. Yeah. You, pro you can have the best nutrition in the world, but if it doesn't get there, what's the point? What's the point? How long is the treatment? Because I'm I thought it was just it's a treatment. That's what I thought. I never it's a treatment. Even for the no, how well, long? I know it's hard to find the right spot for the jaw. It's to find the right spot. If we can find where the muscles are relaxed on the jaw, we can measure it and build people there. And we can actually put them within a microsecond of equal contact on both sides. And this is where I would put like those two separators. Yeah, so is it too big, too small? Or are they bringing them to the right spot, forward, backward, side to side? Yeah. I would tell you put an aqualizer and it's going to be more accurate. They come in three different heights, but I always use medium. Medium and mini. And mini. Not, me, the, me, the mini and the ultra are both medium. They have a slim, which has, is narrow occlusal. Yeah. And they have a, the ultra, and then they have it in high fill, low fill, and medium fill. Oh. I just, I, when, which when one that, do you use then? The ones you have are all medium fill. Okay. And it's because I buy them 50 at a time and it's like, I, I don't want to buy, you have to pick and choose all yeah. of them. It's easier just to get a whole bag of the same. Yeah. Okay. What do you do for people who destroy the aqualizer? How fast are they destroying it? Like I tell them not weeks. to sleep in it. Two weeks is a long time. It's the ones that destroy it in 20 minutes, I believe. Oh. If they destroy an aqualizer in two weeks, how much does it cost to park bait when they come to visit you? It's about, well, 20 bucks. It's $39 for an aqualizer. If they say one visit once a month by having an aqualizer versus not, it's paid for by parking. Yeah. It's, you know, this things are expensive. I'm going to show you the office across the way, though, because if you decide you want to do stuff here, <laughs> you're in the middle of the North Shore. You got Lake Forest, Highland Park, Winnetka, and it's like. I know you told me. Money's here. It. I know. I, you know what? I, I, it's, <laughs> what 
What? Danny, how long you is that treatment? What's that? How long is you that treatment? I mean, is that that's a you treatment, right? It's to relax the muscle so he can work right. with the position of the mandible. Right. So is I do feel you it sit more with on it? this side than this side. Does it matter? Yeah, no, you are. Do you, Jenny? Do you sit with it for fifteen yeah, how minutes? How long do you sit with this thing? Usually at least 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Okay. So we'll actually show you a measurement. We'll actually do the scan. The scan to show you what we're looking for. Okay. Okay. So when we look at the position of the head to the jaw, how I describe it to patients, I'm going to take your pen. If you get on the doctor scale and you set the 50 pound and the 10 pound and the one pound, so perfectly, perfectly balances on that doctor scale. If you move that one pound just a little bit, does it get a little bit out of balance or does it go clunk? It goes clunk. Ladies if you go the other way, it goes clunk. Mm -hmm. So what I tell them is, I have a diagnosis for you. You've been clunked. You're out of balance. We've already shown them the aqualizer. We've already shown them the arm strength. We've already shown them what happens with their feet. We usually haven't had them go up and down the steps yet. You ask whatever question you ask, we, you pulled me out of my order. So this is where the strength is coming from, from the scalings very deep in the neck. Yeah. But they have a very definitive spot on the forward head posture. And if you're breathing, if you over breathe, if you're breathing wrong, they lift the whole rib cage. Yeah. If they're doing it all the time, you're gonna have a forward head posture. Mm -hmm. The cure for that is the diaphragm breathe. So we yep. really, really push breathing mm -hmm. correctly. Mm -hmm. So then, here's the question you asked before that I didn't answer. Mm -hmm. Straight out of Travel, thoracolumbar lumbar chapter. If you look, Leaning up in the yep. the, 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 when the long leg, short leg, the person will almost 100% of the time take their long leg and hold it off to the side. Which, if they don't have a specific traumatic incident, almost 100% of the time, the leg that's going to need the knee and the hip replaced is the long leg. Mm. Every time they take a step, it takes a little bit bigger beating, mm -hmm. but so does the whole body. So I'm gonna go walk with a long leg, short leg for a minute. Just come on over, you can take the computer with you. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what's happened. So now I have, I took off one shoe, I have a long leg, short leg. So now if I walk, if I don't have to study, that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That's not good, so then, you walk on your tippy yeah, toe. I can walk on my toes, or that I can one. do this. I can, now I have a hip problem. So you compensate. That's the problem. So the question now is, if they really have a long leg, short leg, do they need a lift in their shoe? Right. How do you know? How do you know? How can you tell a real long leg, short leg? If it evens it out, you don't. Need one. That's my point. That's why we're doing the yeah. study. Yeah. And then we're going to hopefully a whole lot of studies. Yeah. But what it says is the problem is occlusion. Yeah. And if the problem is occlusion, then we have to correct it. The problem is airway. So it's to put it together. It's to, I use it diagnostically all the time. Yeah. I use it to educate patients. But when you try to walk with one, if you if, try, try to walk with no compensation and one, with one foot off. Shoe sock or off? You can leave the shoe sock on or off. Just don't compensate. Just. And if you walk with more force on it, you'll feel it whacking down. Yeah. And yeah. push your whole spine out of way. Oh, yeah. of course, yes. But we compensate automatically. How long does it take us to figure out how to compensate? About two steps. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now, as doctors, as, as, as physical therapists, as physicians, everybody's treating the result of compensation. Yep. Yeah. Let's get rid of the compensation as much as possible. Yeah. My pelvis has always been like, one side is always in a problem. And I, I'm thinking that it's part of my occlusion because my bite is going to always up. I'm like, if I touch it, it's uh, it, it, it's very, very possible, pain. yes. And now my bite is, is not, you'll no. see, it's not. It's not right. Okay, it's so let's come back here. So let's, so again, this is, this is how I explain it to patients, but it's also what I teach courses. To doctors, I teach them the same thing because most of them don't get how it all comes together. So, here's, the, here's the picture 
If you look on this side, the person has a compensation, the long leg is held to the side. In the middle picture, the two legs are together and now you can see the pelvic discrepancy. And then on the far right picture, there's a book under the foot or a, a, a thotic under the foot and they're even. The important thing, look in the middle picture and look at the spine. You see the curvatures? There's a three curvatures typically, it can vary. Mm -hmm. The curvatures, where there's a curvature, the inside of the curvature, the muscles are tight. So on the inside of the curvature, you're gonna get muscle pain, which is dull, achy pain. Mm -hmm. Ah, but if you get sharp shooting pain, it's gonna be on the other side That's because weird. the muscles being tight push the disc out of position where it presses on a nerve on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. And it can move around as we compensate, so it kind of moves up and down the back. Right. So where you get the pain is on the inside of the curvature is the dull, achy pain. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, we all know dull, achy pain where it's at, but why does it move around so we spend our time chasing it? So the spine, I tell people it's kind of, the chiropractors have the hardest job in the world. Because I have a six foot piece of rope and a five foot arm stretch and I want to hold it straight. Can I do it? No. What if I tie one end to the doorknob? Easiest thing in the yeah. world. Yeah. So the spine, there's three set points in the whole body. Our tushies when we sit, our feet when we stand, both go through the hips, mm -hmm. and our teeth when we close. There are no other terminal joint spots in the whole body. Wait, repeat that again? I'm sorry. It, the three spots where we have a definitive spot, when we stand on both feet, that's, that's a, a permanent spot. We can change it by moving our foot to the side. When we sit on our tushies, our hips, mm -hmm. and when we close our teeth together, those all affect the spine. Okay. So if you think of the spine like being a slinky, you know the big spine, Remember in high school, we'd play with the slinkies and we'd stretch it out and make the waves go up and back? Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you put the aqualizer in. Those waves go up and back and the muscles says, oh, I don't have to compensate. Mm -hmm. And what do our muscles want to do if they can do? They want to use as little energy as possible and relax. Yeah. So just, and it's just now my whole field from medicine in general, is doctors don't heal people. We remove the impediments to heal. If we make an environment that they can heal, people heal. Right. If you cut people open, they don't, that doesn't heal anybody. But after they heal, if you cut something bad out, they can heal better than they were before. Right. No, but you can go to the back corner of the bed. <laughs> I can do that same thing. <laughs> You're a guy. Yeah, just go to the left by the water fountain. So. This is what we did. So this is what we did with you. You yeah. stood. Yeah. Then I made you put your feet together. Yeah. Which you normally don't do when you have a long leg, short no. leg, because no. it don't make you quite your first thing right. you get is low back or, or pelvic pain. Yes. And then I measured your hip height. Then I put something under your foot to level you off. I yeah. wasn't all that perfect, but it was just much less than what you yep. It was less wrong. I checked your arm strength. And then I took it away and checked it again. It went from strong to weak instantly, but that actual strength to weakness was still in this area, in this wow. place, mm -hmm. in this area. It just traveled through the whole body. So we are, look at this, this, what you showed us, you're testing hip height from the front. We do it from the back. That's fine. And we don't test the, the, the strength. Should we start testing strength? You can, but right now for the first thing, yeah. If all you do is have one effect, it's an easier paper. Yeah, that, that's okay. If you're that's treating what, people so, so clinically to... once you've done the, that first test, now you can do the strength test, and I would do it with the aqua with and without. With and without the aqualizer, with the feet so together. So do it with the aqualizer first in, and then take it away. Yeah. But and first, do, but first do your recording before you add anything. Do it first because now you have some pure data. Yeah. You get a new patient, you look at their hip height, this is what we saw, put them in an aqualizer, this is what we saw. Yeah. Do I want to do all the rest of that? Oh, I want to get everything done, but you need to start it. Yeah. You can get the first study done, yeah. now we have a, a basis to build on. Yeah. Okay.
And all I, that I stuff I shipped that you saw from Italy was never right published. Now. Yeah. So, and, yeah. So if we get to 20, 25 people, we can do it as preliminary little stuff. Okay. And it's okay. all, I'll write it with you, but it's all coming from physical therapists who are doing all the measurements. Because okay. nobody trusts them. So they think we're all, we're all biased. <laughs> well, maybe we are. But. <laughs> so same thing happens if you sit. You ever have a patient, you don't, don't sit on your wallet, it's causing your back yes. pain? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So people, if they have a high hip and a low hip, and you compensate and cross your legs. Yep, it makes right. you feel better. Or you can put a book under the thing or a pillow yeah. under the thing and it feels better. Yeah. If you have a person who's got chronic back pain and has this uneven yeah. split. Yeah. Now, a funny thing is they have an uneven split when they stand. Mm -hmm. And when they sit, you can check both. I'm not, we're not doing that yet. We can do it later. It just complicates things with too much data. Uh -huh. Usually, but not always, the hip heights are also correct when they're sitting. Also correct when it's, they're sitting. Yes. Because it's yes. a functional short leg, not a structural short That's leg. Right. That's right. The worst patient you will find is the ones who have one long leg when they sit and the other long and the other long leg when they stand. Because now every time they change position, the whole body has to coordinate to it. If the aqualizer equals everything out, life is easier to treat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not a good long-term answer. Right. It's a wonderful band-aid and diagnostic tool. So this that's what we that's the basic thing we just kind of teach everybody. We tell everybody that the pains in the pictures are frequency diagrams. You know what a frequency diagram is? No. But you show these people you see these pictures yeah, all the time. This, yeah. That's not one person. That's many people. That's Some thousands people of people. And the darker the red, the more frequently they have that pain. Yeah. But in any one given patient, they may have pain to the tip of their big toe or the tip of their yeah. nose. These are the most common patterns. So, so the darker the color, the more of the people have experienced that. The more frequent it is. Yeah. Yeah. Straight frequency diagrams. If you don't, you, do you all have Tremel's books? Yes, yes. Okay, great. If you didn't, I would tell you don't buy this edition three, buy edition two. Oh, okay. The new edition is dreadful compared to the old. So, Go to the bottom of the feet, same thing happens. You can get pain to the heel, to the calf, to the low back, from the soleus muscle. Mm -hmm. Makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. That's a frequency diagram. Mm -hmm. This is a case study of one. Same muscle, except it hurts to the face. Hurts mm. to the jaw, to the eye. Mm. Which is your long leg? I forgot. Stand up for right, a minute. Right leg. So right now, it's had a chance to heal. You know, you've been walking on it for how long? Lopsided. But that can refer to the low back, to the hips, to the feet, and it can also refer all the way up. Mm -hmm. If you follow the Chinese meridians that they use for acupuncture, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everything goes top to bottom. I yes. tried to learn that it was way over my head. <laughs> So that's kind of just a very basic thing we're doing with everybody. Okay. And then, do you still have pain in your low back? Yeah. So stand up. Now put your feet together. And you've done the acolyte thing on yourself? No, actually I haven't. Okay. So if we put my hands on your hip, you're more off than she was. You got a high hip and a low hip. We're also forward and back. So, we're going to put you on the carpet because there's more room to hold your arms up. Stay smooth. That's together. I have you level. Very close. Right together and don't let me push it down. Just one finger. Don't let me push it down. Mm. Yeah. I can do it a thousand times. Some <laughs> people, there's a trick. The trick is we went from healthier to less healthy. Yeah. So we're grabbing that. Do you have another apple? I don't. I, I don't. do. Okay. What size? Oh, you don't know what size you are. Mm -hmm. I don't have any minis, so it doesn't matter. I'm out of them. <laughs> Just used the last one yesterday. I think you would have, you would have needed them. So I'll let you put it in. 
Uh, but we put it on top or bottom. I like it better on the bottom. Actually. Oh, people think it's more comfortable really? on the bottom. Really? I've been always putting it on top. Oh, I didn't know. So I didn't know you can put it in. And, the if you, and if it makes your mouth sore, you can flip it. Oh. Okay. okay so all we did right now is make your even stand with your feet together, all the way together. Can you see, Kathy? Now. Yes. Together, Thank you. Let me push it down. Nope. Now you're strong because you're balanced, but you're still lopsided. Mm -hmm. Now, with me. Let's walk here. You mean you? Yes. Okay. Sounds good. I'm surprised. Why did I never mention about my left jaw pain? We never talk about that, right? Because it happened so long time ago, I, I forget it about it. Explain, it understands why things are wrong. So we don't really know what we're going to say when you get back. Okay. 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 <laughs> they're not perfect, but they're close now. Mm -hmm. So just shake, 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 shake. shake, 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 shake. Don't do the twist. It's mm -hmm. easier than Dr. Crow's mm -hmm. the, the, the shake down. <laughs> what does the crow do? I have never the seen that. The nothing bowl. Oh, ah, the one that you do, Jenny. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. that one too. Really? Like okay. Okay, so. But it's just shake, release just, everything. Yeah, just, yeah. Women are better at that than men. Men have a really hard time of letting go. Okay. Oh, my okay. husband is a robot. Doesn't now, know right right. Now your still <laughs> tipped. Yeah, and it's always tipped to the left. Always. Just sit. Right there. Basically. Oops. Okay, but you're also even when you're sitting. sitting. So I'm going to just leave this in because you're, hopefully it'll separate and come out a little better by the time you leave. But right now we're not doing anything permanent. Just <laughs> Okay, so this is not my part of the body. Something happening? That's smart. I don't know if she can see this. But you know all about quadratus. Your book no, she's still there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the quadratus laborum basically is your muscle. Mm -hmm. It's like. You needle that one like crazy. What's that? You needle that one a lot. Okay, especially on her. <laughs> yes, see, especially the, on this side. Okay, the problem with needling it. Mm. Is if you haven't fixed what's causing it, the problem comes back. Yeah. So pretend you have a nail in the bottom of your shoe mm -hmm. and you're walking around and it's killing you. So you start to walk funny, a little bit different, so the nail doesn't hit. You twist your body and now you can walk with the nail in your shoe without hurting you much. Yeah. But the bottom still hurts a little bit. You know, whole body's twisted up. But that's okay because you're going to the physical therapist. And now it loosens up everything. And as you get ready to leave, you put your shoe on with the nail mat. Yeah. You gotta fix the original, original yeah. causes. So the subscapularis muscle coming up in here. I don't really work with it, but I show stretches for it. And I'll show you some of the stretches we show people. But Can you spray and stretch this thing. I spray and stretch everything. <laughs> everything that happens with movements. Because I, you, so when we look at people, so this is the same information. Yep. This person has a curve in his spine. Yep. If you support his hip on the side that's low, yeah. you straighten out the spine. If you put it on the other side, you make, make it worse. It ah, but if you straighten out the spine from changing the mouth, and this becomes even, that's better yet. That's a fixed point we can change. So now, this same thing. If you have somebody who is high hip and low hip, now you support that. That's what we just did. Yep. But what if you put the lift in the wrong shoe? Well, hard. this happens all the time. People come in and in a moment in time, you examine them. And in that moment in time, the way that corkscrew, because think about the spine like a corkscrew, the twist of the corkscrew at that minute gave them a long leg and a short leg. But the next day it switches, except they have that, sh that lift still. So I watched Janet Chabelle, the first time I heard her, this is why I fell in love with her. It was a whole room, 100, 150, 200 oral surgeons in there. I was the only general medicine there. And she's teaching about myofascial pain. Everybody raise your hand who has back pain. 
two thirds of the room raises their hand. All of that, all the dentists have back pain. How many of you have a lift in your shoe that helped your back pain? Probably 30% of them raise their hand. How many of you have a lift in your shoe, but you still have back pain and it's been years? And a handful of them raised them up. And she pulled up the first one and the second one. The first one she pulled up, I was born. She brought him up, checked him with his lift, and he was even. Then she worked on his back for like five minutes and relaxed the muscles. Then she had him stand and he was like this with the lift. Mm -hmm. Then she took the lift out and he was even. Mm -hmm. Then she worked on for about five more minutes and this man who had back pain for 40 years without a pain. The lift that was put in in a moment of time when he needed it was the wrong thing later. Yeah. So why do I care about the aqualizer and lug lines? Because if I make the bite perfect, but I don't have the spine right, as the spine straightens out, what, I, what was right is going to become the thing that keeps it from getting better. That's why everything That's we why do I is diagnostic. When initially. you disengage this and it improves it, it makes you think that right. the occlusion is the reason why right. there's a problem. Right. So Mariano knows more about the physical therapy, but, he does, he, but I know in, down in South, South America, there's a lot of dentists mad at him because he's just taking over their GMJ cases. Right. And that's because they don't know what they're doing. They need to work together yeah. and they don't. Yeah. Yeah. They, be, they became adversarial. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one spot. You can do this in stick versions. I like stick versions where you can see what happens with different things. So if you actually have a structural long leg, short leg, and you put in a lift, where well, you're going to even out the things, but you're not making everything else better, especially like on a scoliosis patient, you've been that way for 40 years, you got to be careful. But if the muscles are relaxing, and they're evening out, now you're on the right thing. Mm -hmm. If you just put a lift, but you haven't worried about relaxing the thoracolumbar lumbar muscles, what are you doing? And it's like, so again, this is not my part of the body. It's definitely yours. And again, it's not one direction, it's two. Yeah. If you put the heels, the hips, the back, the neck, you're going to have two fingers, you're going to have the hand in there, it's going to be right. So you know, behind the head should be two fingers. two fingers. And then behind the back should be? Just, I put the hand flat. Just the hand flat. And they sh you should feel right. the hand against your back and the two fingers. Yeah. It's hard. If the patient's doing it, I just have them stand against the wall yeah. and go do Kegels. because yeah. they feel, And then take a step away Not from the wall while doing Kegels. Kegels. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'll hold on. And then feet be together or no? Ide well, ideally, yes. yes. But you, since your hips may be off and you're doing it, I mean, we're not going to worry about it if you haven't talked about the number stuff with the aqualizer yet. Oh, so you have to do that you do first before you do it. You don't have to. I don't put an aqualizer on everybody. But, you know, it's like, but I, if that, if you had the aqualizer, then you should do it with your feet together. Otherwise, you're looking at a, a, an accommodated position. But you're still looking at this posture from that sagittal view, you know. So everything happens. So everything down here, though, translates all the way up the spine to the head, to the neck, to the jaw. So every distorted pelvis, the, the angulation, the twist. Again, this is showing a two-dimensional. This doesn't even show the twist. It's just two-dimensional. And so as you change things, what we're trying to do is get rid of the curves and make things right. That's what the aqualizer does. Just because it disengages and it gives you a little moving, It lets flowing. the muscles relax because the, it's hydraulic. It's always balanced. So if you look at the whole, here, give me your paper and your pen. I'm just going to take a page and draw a picture. So here's the head. Here's the spinal column. 20% of what comes into the brain comes from the spinal column. Right? Where's the other 80% comes? 80% comes from 12 cranial nerves. So we have, you remember that old Olympus towering top, that's how we remember them, otherwise nobody would know them. But sight, smell, taste, hearing, vision, proprioception, vagus nerve is a huge one, but the biggest one is the fifth cranial nerve or the trigeminal. So the trigeminal nerve has 70% of the input to the brain of that 80% after it's been amplified by the reticular activating system in the brain. Or a little more than half the total input to the brain. That's much. 
that much. So more than so the vagus. It's got more proprioception than the rest of the body combined from the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. The, the vagus the goes to the gut and the heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the vagus, so, so this is the somatosensory nervous system. That's the one we're always working with, that you work with, that I work with. I also work with the autonomics. So if you work with the autonomics, Vegas is a big autonomic. Yeah. It goes to the gut, the yeah. heart. So we have two. We have sympathetic yep. and parasympathetic. Mm -hmm. What's the sympathetic? Uh -huh. Let me see if that's not go get her in your We won't be here. So the sympathetic is fight or flight. Survival mm -hmm. of the individual. Parasympathetic mm -hmm. is the, it's yin and yang. Mm -hmm. It's the feed and breed or rest and digest. They're always in a balance. It's never 100% one way or the other. If you get all stressed out, you get stomach problems mm -hmm. because you're sending all your blood to your brain and your muscles and nothing's going to your gut, so it's rotting in your gut, you know. This is what's going on at all times. Mm -hmm. If you want to get somebody into sympathetic, have them play with a bunch of pu puppies or kittens or babies. Mm -hmm. Everybody starts to ooh and ah. Even the big, old, burly, nasty people can't help themselves. Pushes them right into the parasympathetic nervous system. So both of these are acting all the time. Yeah. So if we look at the trigeminal nerve, it has three branches. Yeah. We have the ophthalmic branch, we have the maxillary branch and we have the mandibular branch. Mm -hmm. Mandibular branch is the motor branch. Yeah. Where we're stimulating you right now is on the maxillary branch. Yeah. However, there's a feedback loop. So what happens, it's a single reflex. So if you know, put your over my thing, and if I do, ah, that's a reflex. Mm -hmm. That's what this is doing. Mm. You can't control it, stop it. So you can't control it, it's happening all the time. All the time we're just deluged with our reflexes, but that's good because they protect us, except when they don't. So when we pulse you, we pulse the, the, the maxillary branch, but we get the movement in the mandibular branch. Mm -hmm. The muscle contracts, relax, contracts, relax, the waste products come out, the muscle relaxes, it will return to its wet resting line all by itself. It'll do it faster if you have an aqualizer in your mm -hmm. mouth. Because every time they do close, they always hit perfectly balanced. Um. Okay, now on the maxillary branch, so you can't see it here because you can't see the top of the skull, but the foramen rotunda comes out into the pericopalatine fossa. So there's a little there's a little pyramid of bone here. It's a, the pericopalatine fossa is the inside. Inside of there, you have the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve. Is that open? No, this one doesn't. The maxillary artery, at the other office, I have a real skull, which does, and I see all these things better. We have the maxillary artery, and we have the sphenopalatine ganglion. So the sphenopalatine ganglion is the largest parasympathetic ganglion of the head. It's so, that they do a block of. That's the one I do lots of yeah. blocks on. So it Definitely. sits on the maxillary artery. So you can do an injection, do the roof of the mouth, and go right into that area. That's, you can that's do, how you access the SPG? Right? That's not how I usually do it. But if I have a patient I'm getting numb or taking a tooth out on and they have chronic pain, mm -hmm. I'll sometimes inject them there. I won't even tell them I'm doing it because it's part of getting a numb for the extraction. And, I'm gonna, and I'll just walk away and say, yeah, if this makes you, a lot of your other chronic pain get better, come back and talk. <laughs> you can do an injection where you do it through fluoroscopy going through the muscles. It's really hard and crazy expensive. You spend thousands of dollars. Or it's very easy to come in with a long needle through here and do an injection. There's nothing you can hit that's wrong. It's extremely safe. And you can block it there. So that's how we do the lateral Well, the lip. Oh, you're doing it through here? Yeah. 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 Right, right. Angling it down from here down. Most of the time oh, when you're drying needle in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But no injectable. Right. So would that help? Yeah. So when I do it, I would put something between their teeth like this. 
Yeah. And I inject yeah. it from here. So we'll do that too. So, because it goes from the lateral pharyngoid plate to here. I yeah. usually do this one. Yeah. Do that I do this yeah. one. But I always open them up when we do it. Yeah. And then sometimes we will go in through the mouth and we do it. Uh, who's the guy downtown? This is what Goldman. Okay. He does, he does um, I can't remember whose technique it is, but he taught it to me. And when I have a really tough, bad lateral pterygoid, we'll do injections this way, yeah. too, right to the neck. And then you go lengthwise through the muscle, and it's really more like dry needle. I don't dry needle very often, but I do. But I don't use at your needles. I use hollow needles. The thick what I, I, now I try the acupuncture needles, and they didn't cause enough damage. Sounds terrible, mm. but when you create an injury, the body has to heal the injury. Mm. And as soon as there's a hollow needle, it's letting the air in, it's changing the pressure, it changes the, everything's different. Yeah. So I got, even when I dry needle with no anesthetic, I'm usually using 25 oh, or 30 gauge long needles. I guess 30 gauge, it's not because I do, I can use anesthetics, so I'll also do trigger uh, point injection first. Yeah. So I will trigger point inject, Put a little extra fluid and then I run up and down through the numb tissues. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but it doesn't hurt that much. You can get a, if you get a 30, 30 or a 31 gauge needle, it's pretty darn thick. Mm -hmm. It's pretty thick. So, so this is the stellate ganglia or the sphenopalatine ganglia, but it's, that's a parasympathetic ganglia. In the neck, you have the superior cervical sympathetic chain. With the superior and then you have the sympathetic cervical chain and there's a whole bunch of different ganglia there the very bottom one is the stellate ganglion the stellate ganglion they do blocks on for reflex sympathetic dystrophy uh, they do it for complex regional pain syndrome but they were doing that a lot in the military for people with arm and shoulder pain is that like around C seventy one ish? Yeah, it's somewhere down there. I, I, it's not a block I would ever do. It's way over my pay grade. But what they found when they do stellate ganglion blocks, which is a sympathetic ganglion block, and a lot of patients, PTSD will totally disappear in one shot. Really? Wow. Well, this is kind of like what happens. So I don't really know exactly what happens, but here is where these fibers go. These sympathetic fibers run up through the sympathetic chain and right into the sphenopalatine ganglion. Mm. And then those same autonomic fibers run along all the branches of the trigeminal nerve, and they go right up to the anterior two thirds of the meninges of the brain where they control blood flow. Yeah. So it's like, when we do the block here, we change a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And so the remember when I told you where Can you show us the, the, the material you yeah. use for the, the box? Sure. You can't get them now, though. One of my patients brought in a totally different thing. And it, was a, it, was a, it was like, um, it was like an inject, it already had the amount in there. It was like an, a, a needle that, and then it, 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 I thought that you had to have a hollow. There's different things. There's a product that's going to come out called a Relispen which is actually a little thing for emergency migraine. Mm -hmm. And you just spray it, it's got a little piece on it that goes right to the right area. So they may have like a trial or That's anything. That's better. That's not That's really because it's just a quick thing, but if you're away from home and you can't do anything else, and if a quick spray will make it go better, it's great. And you see the ads for you brevely? It's the migraine drug and they say, oh yeah, it'll, it'll get rid of your migraine within two hours. Yeah. Well, if you're out having your life, and you take a pill and now it takes two hours for your migraine to go away. Is this a cure? Mm. It's not even a good halfway decent solution. Mm. You know, that, the Relispen may take that edge off almost like that. Yeah. I've tried to talk to the guy, I haven't been able to get a hold of him yet. But I do have some of his stuff on my site, even though it's not approved as of yet. I'm also doing, are you allowed to do ionophoresis? You can't because you don't use drugs. If you, if you get the permission of the physician that, you know, you have, okay. have, have, have so to get, get it. Paid for Okay, so I'm done. So far, I've only had two people, and they're both me, my, my wife and myself, but mainly me, where we'll go and put electrodes through the catheter into the thing and then put an ionophoresis what? unit, and now we can do ionophoresis. Oh my God. Inside there? Inside. It doesn't hurt. No, you don't feel it. 
It's numb because you put lidocaine. And that increases the passage of the lidocaine. So where do we put the lidocaine? The lidocaine goes right here on the medial wall of the tergal palatine fossa. How do you insert the catheter in there? Through the nose? Through the nose. It's all the way. It's like the first insertion. Think about it. What's in the nose? There, empty space. Empty so, space. It's the first, when I do the needle, the, the yeah. needle release, it's the first one. It just goes straight against the palate and it wow. goes all Everybody's the way different. In. Sometimes it does, sometimes each one is different. Every patient's different. Sometimes you have to wiggle it a little, go up and down. Yeah. So before we do it, we always give them afrin nasal spray, which opens the area, okay. it shrinks the tissues. Okay. Then I give them a little bottle the first time because I want them to be successful. We put some lidocaine in a spray bottle and we have them spray each nostril twice, 20 minutes after they've had the afrin. Now the surface is numb a little bit. So now when they're doing it, it's a comfortable, easy procedure. Mm -hmm. They want to be comfortable, easy procedure. There's a Some lidocaine of them are spray? I don't use a lidocaine spray. I don't like what it. What did I you just, say? I just have a little spray bottle and I put 2% lidocaine in it. A spray bottle and you does it all the same thing? Yeah, I'll show you what one looks like. I just bought them on Amazon. So it works, it works super well. So did your hips still hurt after you went up and down? Because it always hurts you so. My back? My back actually feels better right now. It feels better. Okay, so now I'll show you how I stretch somebody's back. I can just turn it through this way. I'm using it as a little arm. It's my left side. Okay, you're going to have to spread your legs wide off. Just kind of let yourself kind of drop like a rag Very cold, very cold on the low back. Just let yourself drop. Don't rest on your knees. We just stretch segment by segment. Don't stretch like this because mm. you'll hurt things. Just going. Good. Come on back up. See, when you're an old guy, that's the only way to get to touch a lady's ass. <laughs> <laughs> so she's side bent to the right, right? Correct. Where'd you hurt now? Still a little bit here, but this is chronic. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's turn the chair this way a little bit. This sets. This time, instead of going between the legs, we're gonna go over the side. So let your arms hang this way. Don't hold on to the table. I won't let you drop. Oh, that feels good. This is what you're doing for two legs. Yeah, I think And it's all gentle stretch. Most of the stretch is your, is your weight. That feels good. Feels better. So, and this, we teach patients, we make videos of how to do the stretches yeah, yep. because we want people to feel better. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, now let's go over to here because I'll show you something else we do that we teach people all the time because they're trying to restore motion. Somebody wants to pop down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, we we'll use you as a guinea pig so you can aim. I'm going to hit stand right here. Do you ever play golf? Yeah. Okay, which way is your back swing go? This is typical? Okay, good. So take your, this, bring it, this hand to me. Hold your finger in front of you like this. Yeah, I do that. Okay, without moving your feet, turn as far as you can, watching your finger. So you can't go any farther. Have you been doing this one? Mark that. No, I have no clue what it's for. Come on back to the front. Now this it time. You're going to have your hand go this way, head go this way, and stretch your vision. Sorry, maybe stretch your vision this way. Going back to the front. Do the same thing again. Watch and see how much farther you're going. Now you have more increased. Going back again. I did this with my other Opposite direction. And stretch your vision. What does it look like? Maybe stretch the vision. Come on back to the front. I am not. You're going to do it again. Let me try these again. Uh, so many times do you do it? Visual. You do you want. If you're teaching a golf, golf course, you can do it. You can do it. But you keep your sensory input. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, physiological input. Front, so now you're not looking at it. So you do it. You go more further. But then when you fall, you will have even more further. Now you're using both. And you keep going farther and farther. You don't even have to touch people. You just increase their range of motion. So now you're not you're relaxing the muscles. And now she will follow. You're untwisting. She goes further. Decompensate. I still don't get it. Not so she's really saying the muscles relax. Ah, why is it relaxing her yourself? Why are you doing that in the first place? Well, we just probably increased her range of motion 50%. Do you think that's it's important? Just, 
Is, so this is just for range of motion? Ah, the, what, what is this we're, we're relaxing. Oh, the first, okay, that's a good question. The first, we're going to switch out to the food stand here. But your ocular muscles so affect your deep we do neck this. flexors. That's the only thing we do is you just come a little closer. So you hold your finger in front of you just like that. Don't move your feet and turn as far as you can watching your finger. I'll come at you and go farther. Mark that spot in your brain. <coughs> Mark that spot in your brain. Come on back to the front. Now, go the opposite direction and stretch your vision as far as you can. Really stretch your vision. Stretch. Come on back to the front. Have them again and see how far you go. Oh, a teeny bit farther. I mean, not that. Okay. Would you know, would you really understand how much further you went if you didn't do the first and the third? The first and the third is to give a reference point to the patient, to you. If, instead of doing just this, your hand is going down and your hand is going up in the opposite direction when you stretch, or it's going up and you're going down in the opposite direction, it overrides a little bit different groups of muscles. The point is, we do this so they can see the effect. Why does it happen? It happens because normally where the hand goes, the eyes go. When it goes in the opposite direction, there's no logic to the system, so the brain just says, ah, let's let it relax. It's just applied neurology, really. Looking over so this head. isn't about proprioception or like balance? This has to, well, okay, so when you're, when you're out. Because this is what we do with like vestibular. No, this is not vestibular. This is just to increase the range of motion to relax the muscles through the whole spine for the curvatures. Same thing I did when I was rotating her hips to relax the muscles. It just it lets them relax. And can you ask for a more natural relaxation? So it's just an easy way to let things relax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And everything feels, you feel everything changing yeah. in your body right now. Yeah. Well, you've had that pain for how many years? 15, 20, 12. Yeah. yeah. But we've, we've cheated because your teeth aren't touching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, as soon as your teeth are out of it, now you have a chance of getting better. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your teeth, they keep bringing you back. So the teeth keep, bring me back to. And then, Not so then your body has to bounce. So your head tip is way better now. Okay. It's not going. So Dr. Shapiro? No, it's almost perfect. You were Shapiro. way Shapiro. off side before. I think that has a question. Yes. So if you, that exercise, I, I like that exercise a lot. Um, do you necessarily tell the patient to have their teeth touching together when they do it, or does it not matter? Usually I tell them not to. Mm. Okay. You, or I'll give them a cat and roll between their teeth, but if they do have them touched, they'll still get the increase, but it won't hold it very long. Oh, okay. Because the teeth push them back to their original pathology. If you don't correct the underlying pathology, things keep coming back. Mm -hmm. So if I wear this all the time, I would, I'll be fine. That's not you, you, It's not right, but you'll be better, yes. I'll be better. But when I eat, when I you chew, take it out. I take it out. But normally your teeth don't touch when you chew. Normally, the only time teeth touch is when we swallow empty mouth. Yeah. Except for you, you can't swallow empty mouth with your teeth together. You use your tongue. Yeah. yeah. So if if I were if I were to find a patient that balanced their pelvis after using aqualizer for three minutes, we do three minutes on the treadmill. Oh. And yeah. they come back and they're even. That's what I have been doing. Yeah. What do you tell them after that point? Ah, you, that's, that's the reflex. That's the writing reflex. Let's talk about it now. Okay. okay. That was what we said. What, why does it happen? Mm -hmm. so, you, so, Sherrington. Does that sound familiar? Yep. Yeah. So, Sherrington did, got a Nobel Prize for his work with. The writing reflex. I actually bought his original book now, but it's hard to read. It was a series of lectures. But in the simplest way, I'm going to have you stand for a second. So basically, if you didn't have a writing reflex, and I poked you here and you pulled your head away, yeah. you'd fall over like a tree. Yeah. If you pull over, you'd be off balance and just collapse. That's a primitive reflex. Instead, right? what happens is your head goes this way, your shoulder goes this way, your hip adjusts, and you don't fall. How long does it take? How long did it take when I hit your patella tendon to kick? Oh, it's right. instant. Yeah. So, so that's the first thing. It's a reflex, and it's a peripheral reflex. It's not a central reflex. It has nothing to do with your brain. Kind of when you put your, put your foot here, use your brain. 
and don't kick. Don't kick. Yeah. Don't kick. I can't not kick. That's because your brain is broken. No, it's because the reflex doesn't go to the brain. <laughs> it's going so to be It with. comes, it's a single axon reflex, it's instantaneous. So the writing reflex, he did his work with acerbic class. Mm. So what that means is he disconnected the brain and the reflex was still there. So now you know you have a peripheral reflex. In babies, you ever see a baby? Mm -hmm. They try to stand and they fall plop. Mm -hmm. They can't catch their balance. And then one day all of a sudden they can. Did the babies learn how to balance themselves or did the myelin sheath on the nerves grow enough so now there's faster transmission of the reflex? Mm -hmm. That's what happens. And one day they're fine. They don't learn it a little bit at a time. One day they can stand and two days later they're running around bouncing our heads off of furniture. Mm -hmm. Been there, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's so fast. Cool. It's good. a reflex. So all those changes we just talked about with the spine, the curvatures, the hip height, it's all a reflex. So did I tell you A.J. Miller's paper with the mm -hmm. reflex? So A.J. Miller has a whole paper on oral and pharyngeal reflexes. Where you touch the tongue, if you can touch the side of the tongue, it'll make the jaw go backwards. If you touch the tip of the tongue, we have a tip of the tongue reflex called the nursing reflex, causes the tongue to protrude. We have an apnea reflex. We have a jaw jerk, let your jaw relax. There's a jaw jerk reflex. It'll come down and up just like the patella reflex. So all these reflexes are there. So when you were locked, how long, and you were locked for a long time, so you probably had an open lock mm. because your jaw was shifted way to the side. So you, what you really had happen was your jaw mm -hmm. ended up in front of the eminence, which is why you were shifted to one side. Mm. So in order to unlock it, what you have to do is open your mouth wider right. and then move side to side. But sometimes it hurts so much you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So you actually can do for an open lock the same thing you do for a closed lock. Did you, did you do the did a gag? I tried it with that one guy, and it it, 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 it was it was a trismus case. More. He was trismus. Yeah, yes. yeah and I, I that was the, the, singer, the singer. Right, the yep. singer. I tried it though. I, I yeah. was thinking of you. I'm like, I'm gonna try this. He sticks this a, a dental mirror down the throat, and it makes you open like a, a, so a snake. It's a, gag. When, it's a huge gag, and don't warn the patient. First time you do it, don't worry. So what happens is it's a protective it? reflex. So pretend you threw up right now and you can't open your mouth. So all the vomit ends up going into your mouth. Well, it goes up into your nose too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your lungs is in your nose and it's all pretty disgusting. If you do open, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you do open, it comes out your mouth. When we gag, what happens instead of rotating and translating, instead of this and this, for a second we open like this, like mm -hmm. a snake. Mm -hmm. So the jaw is, when we developed, we go through a, what's called an amphibian state in development. And the jaw in the ear is the same thing like a reptile. And then it separates. But for that one moment of time, all the supra and infrahyoid muscles contract. Mm -hmm. And all 16 of the jaw elevator muscles relax. And so the jaw wants to come straight down and simultaneously all the posterior cervical muscles contract. So now our head comes up and our jaw goes straight down. And now we just put something in our mouth before we let them close. So what do you mean put something in their mouth? Because what? once they gag, I don't want it to close all the way because I just lock up, lock up again. They'll lock so up again. Very, very so it could be an aquilizer. Usually I use tongue blades. Tongue blades. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the sooner, the, the faster you do it, the better. To block them and then you try to help manipulate them more so that they're... A lot of times I have people, we saw some of the videos, yeah. lock for months and we just gag them and they come and lock. Other ones, it's a bigger thing. If it's a harder thing to do, then we put in a pivotal appliance. And that's what I did yeah. with, uh, what's his name? We got him open wider, but not. Alfonso. Alfonso, yeah. Oh, yes. Did he ever win? No, I didn't get I don't I think he won. Really I think he would have told us if yeah. he won. I know.
I had voted I had a couple of votes for him. I, I really didn't vote that one. Yeah. It was hard. <laughs> this was a guy who came in, severely locked jaw, walked in. He said he had an endodontist some treatment for like about a month ago. At that time, they did the injection. After that, he could not open his mouth. The opening got shorter and shorter as the week passed by. And the way he came in, he couldn't even talk to me, opening his mouth wider. And he's a singer in the Spanish voice. Uh, he's a participant, one of the final participants. And he has to go for the panel where he has to open his mouth wide and go for the high pitch. He couldn't do that. He came in with some 11 or 12 millimeters of opening. Yeah. We did a, yeah. It was very bad. So I did the evaluation. Sometimes. We did that. I spent like 90 minutes with him. We got to 20 three I think mm -hmm. and that was a lot of forward back forward yeah. back open whatever but of course it wasn't staying and I know that he's going to go back again so I reached out to her she saw him and then we reached out to him because he had to leave on yeah, Monday and, and like, he had seen like a Friday. time crunch I'm like so in three days we had to make sure that he got to like 35 or so mm -hmm. but it was like he was when he left my office he was in a lot of muscle that could really stretch yeah. the yes the sore muscle yeah but he was not, he was out of pain I could have thought from Monday and Tuesday. The pain was all gone. He kept his opening pretty good. Natural pterygoid, both the muscles that we, it, it was big twitch in the natural pterygoid. Both typically with that twitch. though, what you have to do is sprinkle a little essence of thyme. Mm. The problem is he, he was on a, a he had time. no time. Yeah, yeah. it was Christmas, he had to do everything. I mean. Yeah, tri tri typically you try not to do it, but I'll put somebody on a 10 for two or three days. It increases the blood flow. Mm -hmm. Why is it that causes the trismus from the injection? What causes it? Ah, like so you go through the filthiest part of the body, the mouth, yeah. mm -hmm. and then you take this needle and you go through the tissue, so now it's carrying bacteria with it. And then by accident, so what you try to do with this. So what we later understood Ken about this guy in car, that Dr. Shapira found out that that trismus was caused because of the injection that he had during the dental treatment. So that when you go the in, the medial pterygoid so muscle comes from here to here. Yep. So now we open up and we try to slide in between the back of the jaw and the yep. medial pterygoid. But if you go through the medial pterygoid mm -hmm. and now you're putting bacteria from the mouth there and then you hit up against the bone a couple times to make sure you're in the right thing. So now the tip of the needle is bent. And now you pull up and you move to a different spot and you pull up and you move to another spot with this little fish hook on the end of your needle. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they're not getting numb, so you give them another one and they don't change the needle. So now you're taking mm -hmm. that fish hook and pushing it in the other way. So it's just trauma and to it's the muscle. Trauma and bacteria. A little trauma is good, too much trauma is not good, especially in the, in, in the presence of infection. Trauma with inflammation, the body heals. Trauma with infection gets in the way of healing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, do you do antibiotics or are you? I usually don't do antibiotics because it's already there. It's already had the reaction. Yeah. It's, the re it's the body's reaction that causes the trismus. Mm, mm. So usually you kind of wait it out. Yeah. The only reason we did anything with him is because it wasn't a joint lock. Yeah. And he had, a, he had the singing thing. And we had it on some days. So it's like, okay, we're just going to kind of abuse you a little bit to see where we mm -hmm, get your yeah. opening. Yeah. He could open well enough to sing. Right, he could open well good. enough to sing. That was, that was our whole goal. Yeah. If you ask him now, he's probably back to normal opening. Yeah. Is what I'd expect because he wasn't locked. If you You're put right. your fingers, he didn't deviate, he didn't deflect. If he went forward, he could protrude for normally. Mm -hmm. If when he went right to left, yeah, le he could left move. and right. So when left and right, that means there's no disc problem, right? right. If, if, if you have a disc problem here mm -hmm. and you try to go the opposite direction, it's going to hurt right. because the, the, the disc is out here. Mm -hmm. It's got that medial anterior displacement, so it hurts. Mm -hmm. There was a loud noise though. Every time we would move, there was that sound. You could actually hear it. And that was grinding. Well, the other thing that happens is because he's so tight, it's squishing, so you have more friction in the joint. It was hard case. The joint, the hard part of the case was timing. Yep, yep. You're so crammed by the other. And that's he's probably freaking out and nervous and stressing out about what's coming. So that on top of the other. I talked to him a couple of times and I gave him breathing exercise. I said, just concentrate. Because he was quarantined in his room for two weeks. In the house. I'm like, calm down. Watch these videos. I sent him a bunch of videos to watch. So anyhow, that's how the whole system works. Yeah. So now my part is to bring this together right. That That's the easy part. All we have to do is make lots of little dots and make sure they line up and hit each other. Yeah. If they have a 
uneven leg, it's really hard to get their pelvis. Where are you hurting them? Anywhere at all? Not really. It's not really. So let me show you the, I'm going to just take a breathe with your chest for a minute, take a big breath. Does that hurt? Yep. So that's from long-term breathing wrong. That's the intercostal muscles. Yeah, no, do, you want to, do you want to dry needle somebody's intercostals? Not very, no. not very much. It's kind of fun to watch the one Yeah, not good. So I'm going to show you a quick spray and stretch. And I'm going to take the mask off. The first thing I want you to do is just empty your lungs completely. Blow out, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing out. Don't breathe in, keep blowing out, keep blowing out, keep blowing out. Close together. Expand your chest like you're trying to breathe, but don't open your mouth. Expand your chest. More, more. Really expand the lap. Breathe in fast now. Keep breathing in. More, more. And out. If I press here now, does it still hurt? Not, not the same way. It gives you that, that sudden expansion, expansion stretches the inner. I think you had that thing I, in your I had a, a nasal dilator in my. Oh, when I did that just now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I've been hiding my nasal dilators. That's that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, sometimes you get people, you have pain in your stenalis. No. They're almost all, if you, I always do this. Mm -hmm. If they have it, they're almost always sexual abuse. It's usually coming from somebody having a knee on their chest or something. Oh, oh really? Because how often do you see people with really tender stenalis if they have an staring at Yeah, I don't. You don't. And when we do this, we just check the sternalis and if they go to their attack. Have you been a subject? abuse recently or in the past mm. and then they cry a piece of Kleenex wow. and then they tell you and sometimes you're the first person they have ever told. Yeah. Do you see a lot of suicidal patients? No. Or at least we don't know. We don't know. I just Do I was ask, about to say yeah. You ever ask one bad patient? I mean we had one patient yes, I think which Kathy is saying yeah. that he had such a severe ringing and tinnitus for so many years that he had had suicidal thoughts. So. Okay, so for years I've been going, they say all the TMJ patients, they say half of them are suicidal, they have sexual abuse, they have physical abuse, blah, blah, blah. This is what we used to say. And one of the things I tell my female patients, the big busted ones versus the not big busted ones, when you're going through adolescence, you really are like developing. Me? Yeah. Okay. So the late developers, the other girls all have tits, and you don't. So you learn to walk around like this. Mm. Ah, the early developers oh, learn to walk name. around yeah. like this. That's it's a, good point. No, it's it's a very early thing, and it's, you know, it, when you've got big breasts and nobody else does, guess what every single boy in the school is doing? They're snapping your brass straps. <laughs> if you have little ones, you put a bra on just because you want to be like the big girls, mm -hmm. even though you don't need one. So right. there's a lot of psychological stuff that's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But years ago, I went to a full day meeting at the Academy of Health. You caught yourself quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's after a while, all of a sudden it becomes automatic. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to train it. And that's why I have people at home slap their wrists. So <laughs> tell your husband slap your wrist. <laughs> and then they say, I wouldn't tell my husband to slap my wrist. He already beats me up. Mm. You get those things too. I never tell my husband. Now you have to have a whole different talk. Oh boy. So I went to this meeting, full day thing on pain of psychology of pain. It's not my thing. You know, I used to be a professor of psychology at the medical school because that was where the sleep department was. Mm -hmm. But they're talking about suicidal ideation and all this stuff. And I said, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years. Now I've been doing it for 40. I ask every patient if they ever think about it, and they all say no. And these two psychiatrists, I think it was a psychiatrist and a psychologist, they were, they were, what are you asking them? I said, well, I asked them if you ever thought about suicide. So they just look at me like I'm stupid. And they said, that's the wrong question. I just said, so what do you mean? What should I ask? It's, they said, it's not what you ask, it's what they hear. When you say, have you ever thought about suicide? What they hear is, are you crazy? Yeah. And they don't want to think you think you're crazy. They want you to fix them. Yeah. So, well, what should I ask? And they said, just ask them when was the last time you thought about suicide. Oh, yeah. And for me, told me. And why so didn't you come? What stopped you? Oh, I had a shotgun in my mouth. I was going to crash the ongoing truck or hit the median on the bridge. Why didn't you do it? I was afraid I wouldn't die. 
I was afraid my kids would walk in the living room and find my blood splattered all mm. over the house. It's like, what stopped you? If they say, oh, I could never do what I want to live, they want to live. If they said something about anybody other than themselves is the reason they didn't kill themselves, they are so at risk, yeah. crazy at risk. I can't tell you how many dozens of times I'm there with somebody with their mother, their husband, their father, their daughter, and we ask that question. And the, the math of that other person gets dropped because they never no. knew. They never knew. And it's just the simplest little thing. And so now I always ask that. When's the and, last time you thought of it? Oh, so, I see so it every, people, almost every week I get something. And people don't find offense to it? No, like they just how do you approach that question? Mm -hmm. I just ask it. Just like that? When's the last time you thought? When was the last? The first question I used to ask it. You know, were suicidal. Yeah. I go through. I go. I'll, I'll pull out. I'll see if I can find my exam form. I mean, sometimes you see the consult. You don't have the consult. Okay. Oh, first you visit. I don't really want to know, right? Usually, it's coming after I've taken away a little bit. I really like to make them trust me. Yeah. Do you have any pain? No. You always have pain. I have had pain, but not anymore. I would say. When you came in, did you have pain? There was some, yes. And you had pain some. for nine years? Yes. And do you have pain now? No. I'm not feeling anything right now. Which is, I would say it was more of a, I don't know if I can say pain, pain, but it was this consistent discomfort that I knew it was there. It was always. It okay. was always there. So I wouldn't rate it as pain, but yes, that I feel much better. Okay. Have mm -hmm. you ever had really bad pain? Yes. What's the worst pain you remember? When you were locked? Yeah, I mean, that was when it was like okay. dislocated. Also. Imagine being like that for six months or a year. Or imagine if when you were like that, that was your best day for the rest of your life. Oh, wow. And everything from that point after will be worse. So I like to, so I don't Start sell, mm -hmm. I try not to sell people pain, pain treatment. I am not selling treatments. <laughs> I'm selling them in their disorder. And the fact that there's hope. Where's your pain at now? It's not there right now. How do you make it hurt? Actually, the muscles feel better there. Yes. Yeah. It's so it's like when when it's balanced, it's better than not working. It's hard. Is it cure? Yeah. No. No, but if you the trigger point injections or dry needling now. Mm. It'd be more effective because it would hold better because you're not going back to the old But pathology. this is because of this. Because of this. The, plant, the, the appliance, outlet. which is why I do what I do, mm -hmm. because the so appliance we, lets us lift the rest of the body here. Can you explain what you do? In, in, like, so in the simplest terms, yes. mm -hmm. here's the head, here's the jaw. Mm -hmm. We're going to pretend there's an ideal position for the two. Mm -hmm. It could be a little closer or farther apart. We're going to pretend there's an ideal spot. What can be wrong? It can be too close together right. or too far apart. Yeah. Or it can turned. be shifted front mm -hmm. to back right. or, or side to side. Or turned. Mm -hmm. It can be yep. rotated. Yeah. It can be torqued. Torqued is if I take this pen, I can bend it. Mm -hmm. But if I take this pen and don't bend it, but put pressure on both ends but not enough to bend, it's still torqued. Mm -hmm. You ever see like nails popping out of drywall? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got two carpenters and they both build a garage. One cuts every piece of wood perfectly, puts one nail in the corner, holds it together, the wood has no torque. The other guy, ah, this two by four is a little long, so he pounds it into place and puts six nails to hold it. Another one's a little short, so he puts a few nails there to hold it and maybe a screw and now it bows down. And then they both cover it with plasterboard and they both look perfect. Mm. Two years later, one of them's all twisted and out of shape and it looks like it's gonna fall down and 10 years later, it's been replaced. And the other one, 100 years later, is still there. The torque is what wrecks things more than anything. When your hips are rotated, that's torque. If the medial pterygoid muscles are tight, that's torque. Mm. If you hit on one spot and then when you close, you have to rotate, that's, that's torque. If you're walking with a long leg and short leg, mm -hmm. that's torque on the hips. If it's really a long leg, short leg, you want to put a correction in. If it's uh, not a real one, then you don't. So let's go back to Sherrington now. So we put the aqualizer in, and the leg equalized. 
So we have two types of disorders we can have. We can have an ascending disorder coming from the feet going up, and we can have a descending disorder coming from the head going down. down. Mm -hmm. But because of the waves, it's really hard to tell them apart. This just lets us differentiate. And if the leg length's equal when we're doing this, then we don't have a structural long leg, short leg. Sometimes you'll get a patient where they don't, they even out when they stand, but not when they sit. And because it's really, they have a small pelvic bone when they sit, and now you gotta give them a tushy for that. Mm -hmm. And we, we'll do things. And I have a video of one patient I can show you. She came into me, terrible TMJ pain, headache pain, just in this room, older woman. We did a whole bunch of stuff, and we did the appetizer, we had to walk around, we put something under her hip, all the pain's gone. It's fine patient from my practice, one of my partner's patients, and then she looks at me and says, ah, that's the same thing you did to me 10 years ago after I had my other hip done. <laughs> they put her out for surgery, they replaced her hip, they messed up her balance, no, you're we not. got her back to balance, 10 years later they do the other one. And at the same time they add insult to injury as they do general anesthetic, so they create the jaw over they rotate their head back yeah. so that the anesthesiologist can see. Yeah. So I tell 100% of my patients, if you need surgery, oh, just tell me you have horrible TMJ problems and can be very gentle with your jaw. Yeah. Yeah. All you have to do is tell the anesthesiologist that, that you're you more know. likely to come out in good shape. Yeah. Good. good. All the That's time, good regardless. Of the yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, I don't care if they have a bad jaw or not. I tell everybody, oh, you're, you're, you job. have a problem. Yeah. So, okay. that's basic thought pattern in our consults. Yes. I'm going to pull out my actual consent, but the thing we go through. But you do TMD. By the way, John Kelly is referring patients to you now because he's no longer doing facial pain. Yeah, I just heard that. Yeah. And he's like, I said, who do I send to then? He goes, Because he's just Irish doing Shapiro. sleep. He's doing sleep. He used to send me to sleep before yeah. he did sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kelly's no longer doing facial oh, pain. Really? Yeah. He's not doing facial pain. Pain. Oh, so it's just all sleep. No? All sleep. And he works with Friedman and what uh, ENT. He works with Friedman? Yeah. Interesting. So that I'm, I'm not a fan of Dr. Friedman, but way back I tried to work with him. I tried to too. 15 years ago. What does Masonic say? What does yeah, yeah, I'm a Masonic. Oh, I, I worked with him. I was going to go work in his offices and do the sleep. And I trained in all his sleep tasks, how to adjust for appliances. And we went through this whole thing. And yeah. He, Quote unquote, very religious Jew. Yeah. And he knew my wife was sick with cancer at the time. And he brought me in a few times and I trained the sleep techs how to do everything and how to deal with shit. And then he said, then he hired a friend and he said, Bob, my friend's going to do the sleep. And he never even told me. Now, wow. If he would have asked me to come in, I would have done it. I wouldn't have, I, may, I would have done it less, but I would have taught him how to do it. So, but. It was kind of sneaky. I yeah. taught everybody there. I told them the appliances to do, everything, how to do it. And that's what he did. So do you know the Yiddish word mensch? Mensch, no. Okay, I just, Ooh. not a mensch. A mensch means, you know, you Someone always have choices. Whatever choice you make, you always know what the right choice is. Yeah. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was not the right choice. No. If he would have come to me and said, can you help me set up my lab? I would have helped him. It was sneaky and kind of. It was like, and he, he, well, he didn't have intentions to do what I want a non mensch to do surgery mm -hmm. on me. Now, I've worked with him on patients. In fact, I used to be at the sleep center in Skokie, which closed, and now he owns it. And it was like, he called me up and he says, because I, I sent his patient to somebody else for a follow up sleep test. And how dare you do that? How dare you send my patient to somebody else? So mm -hmm. I went and I met with him. I had sent him back his patients. I had no problem sending him back to his patients, you know, who yeah. were treating him for the same test. He's very money oriented. Yeah. After that, I don't. He's just, he's not a good person. Mm -hmm. Even though he's a religious person, he's just not a good person. Yeah. Anyhow, so first thing we tell people, mm -hmm. everybody, this is the book we use. No magic cures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell them there's no magic cures, and I like to walk, have people walk out of my office with no pain. Okay. You have any pain? No. You have any pain? Tightness. None at all. Where's tightness? You're in here. So, I, tell, so, I tell patients <laughs> that pain that comes in different levels. I'm just going to stretch. Just gently. 
Every once in a while, I snap somebody's neck and they end up paraplegic, but they're not yeah. no problem because they're no longer patients. <laughs> Does it feel less tight? Yeah. So, what <laughs> point does tightness become pain? <clears throat> when trigger points are there? I'm going to talk about that. When trigger points are there? I think I missed this for a long time. Some about. of it's how we, personally, how we personally perceive it, because what you call tightness, another patient on a thin edge may call horrifying pain. Yeah. yeah. We don't know. We're not inside their psyche. The first thing we tell them, there's no magic cures. So since there's no magic cures, what do we do? We quality work going through the quality of life. So what's the first thing you know about quality of life? For a pain patient. It's important. Your quality of life sucks if you're in a doctor's office. Yeah. Is that a good place to spend your life? Now there is a subsection of patients who have no friends and nobody who talks to them and their whole life is going to the doctor. And the scariest thing you're gonna tell them is you're gonna take away their need to go to the doctor. Maybe they have an abusive husband or someone who just doesn't communicate at all or there's nobody at home, but you're their safe place. Mm -hmm. Last thing they want to say, they don't want me. Those patients need to have a place to go. The next thing we tell them, 90% of all pain anybody in the world gets is by facial pain. Mm -hmm. every, every single physical therapist, massage therapist in the world knows this absolutely true. Okay. Every neurologist doesn't believe it a bit. Yeah. Not a bit. So the M in myofascial pain is muscle. And the F in myofascial pain is connective tissue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Easy as can be. So if you eat a piece of steak, the red meat's the muscle, mm -hmm. the white stuff is the connective tissue. Mm -hmm. If a cannibal eats you, the red stuff is your muscle <laughs> and the white stuff is the connective tissue. Yeah. And I do that same conversation because I want them to understand it's them and then they're alive and vegetarian. Are you a vegetarian? Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about eating it. You just have to worry about the cannabis. <laughs> so, on this page, th these are all the symptoms, but I've already yeah. gone over their health history yeah. before I'm here. On this page, I just tell them to rate their pain, whether it's right side, left side, or both, mm -hmm. and date it. To tell them to keep it. Because nobody ever remembers the order things come in, the yeah. better, but if you have a two on the right and a five on the left, yeah. usually it's, there's one side that's worse, but sometimes there's not and it tells you stuff. But I just want them to think about it. I want them to go home after our thing. Mm. That's the first time though. <laughs> I think it's going to be useful. I think it's useful. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, and this is the thinking. Yeah. <laughs> That works great when you're a brown statue. <laughs> never hurts. I've never used that one before. So play fair. Okay, the joints. So we talk about joints really brief. First thing we tell them is they say, I have PMJ. And I said, yeah, everybody has PMJ. In fact, everybody has two PMJs unless a surgeon has cut one of them out. <laughs> if you went to the orthopedic doctor because your knee hurts and you looked at your knee and said, huh, you've got knee, yeah. how impressed would you be? Yeah. Ah, you've got shoulder. <laughs> Crazy. But we call TMJ. Norm, have you all seen these before? We have yes. this. We have this. Okay. So when you open and close, mm -hmm. you get two motions, rotation and translation here. If the bite's in the correct position. Everything hits even, and no matter how hard you bite, this stays in the right spot. Mm -hmm. This is good. I'm going to change the bite. Now you bite, oh, you slid off the retro, into the retrodiscal lamina. Now you squish or squeak when you close, but when you open it goes click, because that's the sound of it going back where it belongs. Now you go click, squish, click, squish, unless you go squish. Mm. Now you go, ow, and you can't open it. So what do they do? If you go to the doctor, they're going to give you muscle relaxers and pain pills. What you got to do is get the mouth open. So if you're locked and you gag them, they open like this. Now you bring them forward and grab the disc back. If we make an appliance, we're making them normal. It's not magic. Be right back. And now it's past ten, guys. Are you okay? Yeah, Jenny, I think I have to go. Don't worry, I'm gonna just keep filming. I'm I'm recording okay. I'm this. Taking... And I'll put it. I'll put it on YouTube. You have notes. Okay. 
I took okay. notes, and if anyone wants them, I'll yes. um, I can email. Email them to me, okay, and I'll put them on the SharePoint. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Nice Have a good night, sweetie. Thank you. She needs to go right. Bye. Okay. Nice Bye. Thank you, doctor. Ours is broken. I think that you have. Ours is broken. Yeah. So now. It's like this. <laughs> it's 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 yours is a, yeah, yours broke too. No, no. This is what, what we messed with it. Someone said it. So now you try to bite. It's going to throw you off, depending on where the bite is. So you can change the bite. But as you close, it goes all the way down the whole neck. Yeah, it, the effect of it. I don't remember what was here. The disc. No, that's the disc right now. This, it's there. It's, it's there. Oh, the little metal post is off your side. Now, my ours little is, disc. Ours no. is like gone. You don't have this a disc here. No. Got it. Okay. That is but, I mean, you can, can still talk, about the, you can talk about the connection. You can talk about forward head faster. These are the muscles. Where's the hyoid? So it makes it. I know this. PT, that's Jewel Hudson from Amsterdam. Oh. Yeah, I actually bought two of them when I went to Oh, that's his thing? Yeah. Okay. They're expensive, those things. I don't remember. It's like 100 something. No, it's like, I want to say it was more like 500. I mean, yeah. That's really expensive. Okay. And that's what I was thinking. Do so you know the FS index? No. Okay, so it talks about problems that happen. So you start at a young age and they get worse and worse over time. What does FS stand for? Kenny, uh, it's, what's the name? I can't there? see a thing. Uh, <laughs> hang on, what are the things here? It doesn't say. It's the doctors. Uh, oh, it is? This okay. was Brendan Stack, but it was Kenny Funt or something. Gotcha. With the author, I can't see the rest Lawrence of their name. Lawrence Funt. Oh, there's Funt. Well, Bethesda. So, the problems get worse and worse with time. So I send them home with this book, unless I have to go do a hygiene exam, and then I just don't find yourself. Where are you? And where you? are you? Mm. And then I tell them, kind of like the story of your life, but sometimes you can go from zero to 60 in 20 minutes. So you could never have a pain, then you drive this location, so you have a baby, get pregnant, they screw up everything. Yeah. So <laughs> I tell them that's the scariest book in the whole pic the picture in the whole book, because it says if you were here, then you're going to be here, then you're going to be here, oh, then no. you're going to be here. Oh, Life's going to suck big time for you. It's a lie. Mm. Just like this is a lie. Because there's not one joint, there's two. It's a three-legged stool. You ever sit on a three-legged stool or mm -hmm. one of the legs wasn't the same length? Do it for 10 minutes, I'll drive you crazy. Yeah, yeah. If you go to a bar and do it for two hours, you're going to stretch and put one foot on the floor, an arm in here. Yeah, yeah, like when you get up, you're going to hurt all over the damn place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because you have to correct Think the balance. Two. Yep. So this is time, and it can be days, weeks, months, years, decades. Angriest patient I ever had 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 continuous migraine for 50 years. Mm. Why was she angry? She we got rid of it on our first visit. She was married to a radiologist and she'd been treated by all his physician friends and nobody helped. She didn't come in to see me. Her husband had sleep apnea. She made him come in because he had a movement disorder and she read that it, not treating the sleep apnea can make it worse. And we made her an appliance and she's doing this the whole time and this and this. I said, can I have a headache? She says, yeah. I said, can I see if I can make it better? She said, sure, you can try. I do a little spray and stretch and put an aqualizer in her mouth and went on my way. I didn't know she even had migraines. Wow. She came back the next time and says, okay, I'm glad we got my husband taken care of. I've had a migraine for 50 years and it's now gone. What are we going to do to keep it that way? Yeah. We ended up doing a full mouth reconstruction on her, but it took a long time. We did all sorts of stuff, but it was... That was typical medicine. So his, just so you understand, like he will change the bite of a person to fit where it's supposed to be physiologically, right? Like where it's supposed to so be. So that would be a more permanent solution to them? Yes. So if you talk, what you're hearing all the literature from the oral facial pain people is you never make permanent changes. You go to mm -hmm. tmj.org, never make permanent changes. Well, that means never make anybody well. Okay. Why are we doing this thing with the aqualizers? From change. a physical therapy thing, we want to show that oh, changing the bite will change, can change everything. Well, to keep it change, you have to make it permanent. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's what we want. That's my goal. I want to say, yes, what happens in the occlusion affects every single part of the body. And if it comes from a dentist, it doesn't mean the same as it comes from a yeah. physical therapist. Yeah. You guys are the experts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is not how it really happens, though. Actually, there's good days and bad days, good weeks and bad months. Right. There's a flow. 
So first thing I tell them, this is also a lie. Doesn't have to get worse, but this is the general flaw. So remember when you were in seventh grade? Mm -hmm. You have a paper you didn't do or a test you didn't study for. What do you do? Oh, mom, I got a terrible headache. I can't go to school today. Maybe real, maybe not. You may be stressed from not having it done, and it may be a real headache. It may not be. It doesn't matter. You're Indian. You never did that. <laughs> you were always ahead of the curve and had everything done ahead of time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, this, this is the best I've gotten as an Indian. So. <laughs> this is threshold. Threshold is the point where you find it to be a problem. So you can have an underlying problem every day of the week, but until you get stressed out because it's a paper or the test, it doesn't bother you. Yeah. Maybe it's not a paper or a test. Maybe you just got a big zit on your face and you're going to be sitting next to that cute boy and you don't want him to see it. Yeah. That's all it takes for an adolescent. Yeah. It doesn't take much. Yeah. A few years pass, now you're in high school or college, and the stuff that was terrible then, you finally pop an aspirin or whatever and you keep going, but boy, this is bad. So you raise your threshold. And a little bit later, you have a job or a baby or a husband or God knows what else you have, wife, girlfriend, mm -hmm. and you raise it again. And you just keep raising your threshold. Yeah. It's called learning to live with pain. It's a great system. Mm -hmm. Just raise your threshold. The problem is it takes a whole lot of energy. Mm -hmm. I like the term vital energy. I tell people I made it up. But basically, more and more of who and what you are without them covering up your pain, so now there's less of you to have friends, to have family. Your husband come home from work and instead of greeting him with open arms and a kiss, you kind of bite his head off. Mm -hmm. You yell at the kids. Mm -hmm. All the things that people know are happening and if they're crying, the, girl, the girls in my office say if they cry, they die. <laughs> it's like, I'm not trying to make them cry. I'm just trying to make them do it. But if they, they cry, they buy. If they cry, they buy. They're going to go through. The case is going to go through. We've made that emotional connection. Okay, got and it. They now got believe it. I have the answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I oh, now I have to work three times. And people who cry, you work harder than anybody to get them well because yeah. you don't want to disappoint them. Right. They've been disappointed too many times. Yeah. Now, if you start to treat people on this curve, the trick is to treat them on the right day. If you start to treat them on this day, when all hell getting ready to break loose, whether you do the right thing, the wrong thing, or nothing, all hell is going to break loose. Oh, you did that dry needling, and every inch of my body has hurt ever since. It was going to happen. You just picked the wrong day to start. If you would have done the same thing four days later or five days earlier, they would have said, oh, you did that trigger point in my life has changed mm -hmm. for the better. And then we think, what did we do wrong? How did we mess up? Yeah. There is a natural course to the disease all the time. So what patients need to know, and I tell them this exact picture, that depending on when you start, one guy you think is a maniac and the other guy you think is God's gift, and then so you spend the next two years with them, but it was just an accident of which day you saw them first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I always tell people we're gonna shoot for 50 to 80% improvement, but even with improvement, there's good days and bad days. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the worst pains, or at the peaks. Yeah, yeah. These are stress-related disorders. Mm -hmm. So we have emotional stress. I prefer the term life stress. Money, mortgages, husbands, wives, crazy patients, crazy neighbors, insane bosses. We have all these things. <laughs> Children. So basically, Very the expression <laughs> is, shit happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you want a stress-free life, find a dark closet, go inside, close the door behind you, and you have no stress. You also have no life. It doesn't work. So we can't fix this. Mm -hmm. Having said that, this is emotional stress. Pain is felt in the limbic system. That's where we feel emotions. If we are in pain, we don't feel a whole lot of this other good stuff. We only feel the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. We can have structural stress. Bites, bones, muscles, pasture, bad habits, um, kinky sex, um, <laughs> trauma, motor vehicle accidents. We can add, everybody has their own. 
some people have accidents after that. You ever have a patient with two, yeah. three, four accidents? Yeah. It's like, they must be the worst driver. I had somebody who had like seven, eight accidents. They were never her fault. I mean, we're really, she, she comes, <laughs> but I've had another accident. You know. Yeah. A semi came off the top of the bridge and landed on top of her truck. Oh, wow. her, yeah. her now, no matter how bad a driver you are, you can't no. make it happen. No. Sometimes there are people just have a target that got twisted. Mm -hmm. So we have structural stress. And you can include teeth and feet and everything else. We have biochemical stress. Biochemical stress. If you want to have a biochemical stress headache tomorrow morning, have a fifth of gin tonight. It can yeah. be allergies, alcohol, it can be hormonal changes, it can be diet, vitamins, minerals, not enough protein. Or just put protein, doesn't matter. Whatever it is, if things aren't right. Muscles need calcium and magnesium to contract, mm -hmm. yeah, but they also need it to relax. If you don't have enough magnesium, you're more likely to have a problem. We live in the Midwest where we have the natural lowest iodine levels of any greater mm -hmm. capital of the world, so we have all these subthreshold thyroid patients all over the place, mm -hmm. so it's all different things. But we're going to pretend all the stresses are low. Can I pick on you? Mm -hmm. What's your husband's name? Sujay. Sujay. Mm -hmm. Can I pick on Sujay too? Oh, sure. Okay, so you, your stresses are all low. Mm -hmm. Life is feeling great. Mm -hmm. One day you come home from work, so you had a great day. Three people said you're the best thing that ever happened to you in their life. You are just feeling on top of the world, and Sujay comes home and tells you. I don't know how to tell you this, but I've been gambling. You know the kids' college savings and the house and the cars we used to own? We don't. And if he says, oh, that's not even all of it. I've been having an affair. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> you chose the wrong person. Now it's stressing me. <laughs> <laughs> now and and, you, and, your, head, and, and your, head is, your head is ready to explode and die. Can you do it the other way? I'm, I'm having an head. affair in his. <laughs> Why not? Put the stress on. Did she just proposition me? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so on the other hand, he coming back and saying, you know, I didn't really have I just was kind of having thoughts and I'm feeling really guilty about it. And even though I lost all of our money gambling, I just won a 200 million in the lotto. And I realize you and the kid, you have one kid? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and this little brat are the most important things in life to me. And I'm going to spend the rest of the rest of life raising the happiest person out there. And your stresses go down. And this way you go, oh, my head hurts, my back hurts, my neck hurts because of Sujay. It's Sujay's fault, it's Sujay's fault. That son of a bitch, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> Sometimes something else happens though. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe we didn't sleep well, maybe we're worried about something. And all these little stresses build up and we feel like crap. I don't know why I feel so bad, nothing happened. Uh, actually, exactly the same thing happened in both times. Our stresses increased past our ability to cope. Mm -hmm. One way we had Sujay to blame. The other way was just lots of little shit. Having said that, it's always lots of little shit. We yeah. just like to blame someone or something. Yep, we yep. like to pass blame, but it's always all the different things that build them up. Mm -hmm. Then we go back to this page and said, these are when your stresses are highest. Mm -hmm. So now you move on a little bit. We talk about referred pain and they go through the whole Travel thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I ask if they have kids. Mm -hmm. you know, how old is your little one? Nine. Nine. Mm -hmm. First thing I'm going to do is I say, oh, you got a nine year old. Do they have dark circles under their eyes like you do? And you go, yes, I'm going to say that to the doctor in the city you need to take them to. I'm going to send you this to Kevin Boyd. He and I may be doing a research project looking at the parents and kids. Oh. I think I'm the best referring doctor because every every patient I come in, I said, oh, do you have kids or grandkids? You should see him. What? You tell him you should go see him. I tell him go see Kevin. He's, he's great. He's fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he can prevent all this stuff. Ideally, my, my assistant who lives in Wisconsin wanted me to treat the little ones. I'm taking my daughter to John Kelly right now. <laughs> John, yeah, John, yeah. yeah. John works with, with Kevin. Kevin's the best, so I just send everybody to Kevin. Okay. But that's, John Kelly, you want to grow them early. Yeah. Also, my assistant took her three-year-old to see, and she lives in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. She drove see, all the way into the city to see Kevin, and it's already done it, and she's already got her two-year-old who's been there six months ago. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, how soon is too soon? Well, let's see. When does the brain develop its most? Let's do it then. Mm -hmm. I got involved in this because I had a five-year-old son who went to sleep after. Nobody would listen to me. 
I left. For two years, I fought with doctors and nobody would listen to me. At five years old, they were, well, we live in Highland Park, so they checked the kids to see if they're ready for school. And they said, oh, your kid has ADD, ADHD, and we're going to put him on Ritalin for the rest of his life. Yeah, right. I'm going to let you do that to my kid. Took him to the rush, had a sleep test. First thing they said, well, it's $6,000 and your insurance won't pay for it. I never asked. I said, let's do the sleep test. We go in, we do the sleep test. I spent the night talking to a postdoc postdoc fellow all night long. My son's doing the sleep test and I'm not leaving him there alone. Turned out he had an apnea index of 60. We took out his tonsils and adenoids. We orthopedically grew his mouth. We cut a tongue tie and a lip tie. Mm -hmm. And a, a short, fat, kind of difficult kid to be around. Happy, but difficult. Yeah. Immediately went from a 50% growth curve to a 90% growth curve. He graduated college, double major, double minor, magna cum laude. Turned out his drug of choice wasn't riddle it was oxygen. Mm -hmm. He needed to, to breathe. breathe. Period. Yeah. So. Talk about recurrent pain, yep. then we talk about pain. Mm -hmm. First off, you know what? Men don't like to be around women in pain. In fact, they have a five little <laughs> word that starts with a B that they use to describe them. B-I-T-C-H. <laughs> because if you're in pain, you're no what's your husband's name? Michael. When Michael comes home, if you've been hurting really bad all day, you give him, put your arms around him, no. kiss him, and take him to the bedroom? No. no. You're lucky if you don't bite his head off. <laughs> take the kiss. Take the kid as yeah. you do the first thing out of your mouth. So you get stressed, because you get stressed, you tighten your muscles, you tighten your muscles, more pain, more pain, more spasm, more spasm, more tension, you end up on the merry-go-round. Yeah. Sometimes you know why you're on the merry-go-round, sometimes you don't. When you know why you're on the merry-go-round, it's easy, it's secret stuff. <laughs> when you don't, it's lots of little things, but having oh, said that, it's always lots of little things. When you're on the merry-go-round, those are your peaks. Yep. Down here is sleep. When you're stressed out, how well do you sleep? You don't. You don't. If you don't well. sleep well, you get more stressed. If you're in pain, how well do you sleep? You don't. If you don't sleep well, your pain gets worse. So there's all these little merry-go-rounds. If you have a lot of spasm, how well do you sleep? You don't. If you don't sleep well, you get more spasm. Down here is big old depression. If you're in pain, it leads to depression. If you're depressed, your pain gets worse. If you get spasm, it leads to depression. If it doesn't get better, it gets worse. Tension, same thing, and sleep and depression are related. It's like the expression used to be, stop the world, I want to get off. That's what everybody wants. They do not want to be on this crazy nuts and very yeah. You know what a psychosomatic illness is? Mm -hmm. So with your pain, is it a psychosomatic illness? No. Okay, so if, if you had pain, yeah. if you had a psychosomatic illness, what it would be means in English, not doctor, I hurt because I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you crazy? No. Good. Glad well, to know. hear it. We can work together. Mm -hmm. Same two words in a slightly different order mm -hmm. is somatopsychic. That means in English, not doctor, my pain is making me crazy. Yeah. If you hurt all the time and you don't get depressed, you're a certifiable nutcase. If I took a Big sharp bowie knife, shoved it in your side, and started twisting. How long till you get depressed? About a second, maybe two. Pain is a normal response to depression. Uh, depression is a normal maybe response to chronic pain. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is explained to everybody. Yeah. And if I haven't already asked them about suicidal things, we talk about it now. Yeah. A lot okay. of times that's when they cry because it's not their fault. Mm -hmm. And then I always ask them, always, if you ever had a doctor who treated you like you were crazy. Oh yeah, a long women time. especially. I said, was he a psychiatrist? And he said, no. And I said, if a doctor treats you like you're crazy and doesn't believe you really have pain, it's a bad doctor and you want to change doctors. Mm -hmm. I tell them every single one because they make them worse. Yeah. When they, when they act like they don't believe them, that they're a pain, they make those patients worse. Mm -hmm. and it's the system has totally failed. Them right, right. You know who Hans Selye is? No. In 1950, Hans Selye, the same year I was born, Hans Selye wrote a book, The Stress of Life. What I call pain in my little diagrams, he called alarm. What I call threshold, he called resistance. Mm. So we're covering up, covering up, covering up. And then he talked about exhaustion. If you're living your life up here, barely keeping things under control, now you've got a cold or a flu 
where you miss a couple nights sleep, you feel like you got hit by a train or a Mack truck. You have mm -hmm. nothing in reserve. And so what happens is something pushes them over the edge. Oh, maybe it's a spouse that died or their husband had a heart attack or somebody had a stroke and everything in life changed and they have nothing left. They've already put it out. Almost all, the, a lot of the patients we see, not almost all, a lot of them, they're the caretaker for the whole family. They've taken care of the husband, the mother, the father, the brother, the sister, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But there's nobody left to take care of them. And they just hit their breaking point. Mm -hmm. So we need to do a diagnosis. First thing we do, I talk to you. Mm -hmm. I said, I usually know within about two, three minutes what's going on. Before mass, I'd watch how people swallow, and you see yes, all the deviant yeah. swallows. You see the dark circles, the breathing. You see the tips, the heads, the, the, the forward head posture, mm -hmm. the breathing here and not here. It's, it's obvious. We see it. We're trained to look for it. Mm -hmm. So I tell them, yeah, the first five minutes, I kind of figure out what's going on, and now I have to explain it to you in terms you understand to make it real. I tell them, I used to poke and prod and find all the spots that hurt, and then I'd send you home to come back and you'd go home feeling 10 times worse. Mm -hmm. You yeah. wouldn't want me to do that today, would you? No. Nobody ever says yes. I said, we're going to need x-rays, we need models, we're going to use a low-frequency tens to relax your muscles. That's right. We're going to analyze how your jaw movements. We can measure your muscle activity and joint sounds. I usually don't bother because it costs a lot of extra money, mm -hmm. takes a lot more time, and I'd rather spend my time making you better. But if you really want all the extra bells and whistles, we can do it. It's just going to cost you a whole lot more money. Want to spend a lot more money? Mm -hmm. no. Nobody no. wants to spend a lot no. more money. Mm -hmm. No matter what we charge them, everybody thinks it's too much. Yeah, yeah. We show them the picture with the tens. What's it feel like? This is a jaw tracker. You put a little magnet, attaches to the jaw, and we can measure three dimensional how fast it's going, right, left, forward, back, oh, where it's wow. at. Okay. That's all it does. It just measures the position of the magnet in space. If this is the jaw, actually need two pens to be the jaw because they're two points. And this is the magnet as the jaw moves, we track the magnet, mm -hmm. not the jaw. Mm -hmm. But magnet. if the magnet does this, the same thing's happening here, here, and here to a smaller degree. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean if so if it goes this way, we typically we think oh the jaw is going to the side. Well, it is possible it did this, mm -hmm. but it's quite unlikely. So we infer what's happening here, but we actually measure just at the magnet point. And it gives us tracking on a computer. We can record sounds, I usually don't. We give lots of questions to go through. Then we talk about treatment. What do we do? It's really simple. Part one, get rid of the pain and the muscle spasm. Mm -hmm. Do I want to do dental work, reconstruction, lots of things that I can't undo before that? No. Get them comfortable. Stabilize the bite where they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. Through appliance. When do we go to physical therapists? Well, once they have an appliance and they stabilize the bite, they still have the rest of the body and mess, you got to get it fixed. Yeah. Sometimes they're coming to me from the physical therapist because mm -hmm. they will stay stable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get them from massage therapists, I get them from chiropractors, I get them. Lots of doctors. Yeah. Once you get comfortable, now you have to figure what are we going to do long term. You see a lot of people come in with full mouth reconstructions and pain. Yeah, they didn't do all this. They didn't. You, they they didn't didn't totally ass backwards. And I've talked to a lot of reconstructive dentists, and they it's like they don't they understand don't, the heads connected to the rest of the Yeah, body. but they also I think have a hard time working with someone else and waiting and trying to to deal it's with. About money. I'm old, my kids are grown up, my house is paid for. If I decide that I'm ready to retire tomorrow, I can close the doors and not worry about it. If you're hungry and really want the money and want the money and you have a quarter of a million in debt and you're yeah, up you're, to your ears, you're, you're, trying, to you're, trying, to build. To, you're trying to build. Yeah. So what can we do? Sometimes we can grind down teeth, not very often. We can make removable on the overlay partials like the gold one I showed you. Mm -hmm. We can do a reconstruction. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, some people can't afford that. We can take their lower plastic appliance, one tooth at a time, build composites on the teeth to the, exactly the same spot, do a few more adjustments, and they got a long-term temporary solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They need something else done. But it's better than nothing. It's, it's stable. Sometimes we can do orthodontics, mm -hmm. not very often anymore. You can always do surgery. 
I love the quote, there is no disease or disorder known to mankind that can't be made worse by sticking a knife in it. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean don't do surgery, but if you're gonna do surgery, be really sure you wanna do it. Yeah. And when's the best time to see the physical therapist? Before surgery. Before. Before Why surgery. don't all surgeons send, send patients them. first? It's real simple. If you fix them, they're not gonna get to do their surgery. Right. What do surgeons wanna do? Cut. Cut. Right away. Mm -hmm. So they do the worst thing they possibly could for the patient. I know. So when you get a doctor who sends them before surgery. Harvey is sending new patients now. Harvey. Alan Harvey and the, these women, I love the women, they'll come back. Okay. First thing Can you tell them is, oh my surgery. God, you have such a good doctor. He wants you to do the physical therapy right, before. Right. He's willing to sacrifice possible future income because he cares more about you than making money. And you just keep telling those patients that, and you know what they're going to do? They're going to yeah. tell him. Yeah. You're a good doctor. She thinks you're great. You care more about me than you do about just making money. What kind of reputation does that build? Right. You're the good doctor. Yeah. So then we have the DNA appliance. DNA. The DNA, the RNA appliance, we can grow bigger airways, bigger jaws. Did that seem to turn out? Because I was going to ask you about no. people with like, really narrow pellets. I don't like the ELF. I do the ELF. I got some ELF samples I can show you, but I don't really like This it. is more forceful than the ELF. More is forceful. This is you turn the key okay. and, and you wear it a lot longer. Um, it's like a big appliance that you wear is for the, the majority of the day time? outside of work, right? Like you can yeah. pick it up for work mm -hmm. and then you Who wear it the, the rest of the time. Um, Judith, Judith. Judith Danaher, she, oh. she, she's seen me yes. before COVID, she was coming in. Judith Danaher. I know who she is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's, something, she, she's got some cosmetic concerns. Yeah. And we've been widening, I she think she's widening done. right now. I'm trying to remember what else. Her. I don't think she's quite done. She's not done. And I don't know if she's continuing. <laughs> oh, look, I'm not sure she's continuing either. Um, sometimes people have this idea in their head where they're going to end up, and it's like she's not a, she's not done, and you can correct everything. But I think she was concerned about evenness and stuff, and yeah. it's like that's not what this appliance does. That comes next. Yeah. Um, I think she told me that you said, "Oh, you got such a big arrow, big mouth," and because I think you said something to her how wide it is. Yeah, she is wider. It's mm -hmm. a lot wider. A we, lot we're wider. real good at growing bigger airways that makes everything better. Doesn't it, does it ever narrow back? Like, does it ever collapse back? Ah, that's, that's why pain, you do oral myofunctional therapy. therapy. The best retainer it's a tongue. is the tongue. And the lips. If they swallow right all the time, guess what does the final reshaping of the arch? A lot of people don't need ortho after growing bigger because the tongue's there, and now it just makes it shape and match the tongue. Ah, I've had people who've lost half their tongue. Their faces collapse because there's no tongue to push the teeth out and everything starts to collapse inward. What about people with macrobiosis? Most, you can only grow that. So most of those people have deviant, bad deviant swallows. The tongue <laughs> is being used the, the wrong way. Mm -hmm. The hyoid bone is going up. And what you see in the math is normally 20% of the tongue and 80% of the tongue is down here. Uh, These people, the tongue is way up high, so it looks big. It's not a big tongue macroglossia disorder. So you have to pull the high down? You have to, you have to bring it. As soon as like, you always will see the big tongue on people, you know, here, as you straighten the head out, it goes away. So it's more like postural. It's postural, it's tongue. If you have a narrow mouth, where are you gonna put the tongue? Down. Down or up. If it goes up, it looks huge compared to the tongue. And these are the people who gag when dentists work on them. They can't stand them. Why do they gag? Because they got to compromise their way. And now you stick two hands or three hands in their mouth and a mirror and a drill and start spraying water and they're going to drown. And they're anxious and they're phobic. Well, you know what? They're protecting their airway. If somebody's trying to kill you by suffocating, you're going to be a little nervous. You're going to be pure sympathetic. Yeah. Pretend you're out in the middle of Lake Michigan. You fell off the boat, you can't swim, you see the boat going away and you're trying to keep your head above water. Think you're in your sympathetic mode? Oh, yeah. A little stressed? Right <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this book? No. no. 
I have to remember to bring another one in. This is a present. Aww, this book cool. came way out in originally in 1967. Wow. So this is not new. Okay. The first person who really coined the term oral myofunctional therapy was a guy named Jim Gary. Gary, yeah. He invented the term. He was also the guy who invented the nook. Except the nook was not a pacifier. It was an exercise, like a mile munchie. Mm -hmm. It was designed to grow a bigger mouth. He sold it to Playtex, who turned it into a pacifier, oh and he gosh. said that was the biggest mistake of his life. Wow. But it also made him rich. Yeah. These are kids with airway problems. The allergic salute, you know this one. Mm -hmm. Fidgety as hell. These are the ADA kids. All these kids have shoulders out of focus when you look at it. Yeah. They have kind of sad looking faces, reverse smiles, mm -hmm. dark circles under their eyes. Sometimes you'll see the crease from the salute. Yeah. You stop yeah. and do it as you go. Yeah, what's the name That's of that? That's the allergic salute. These are some of the patients, the sad face. All of these kids don't look right. Dark circles. If you look at their shoulders, the shoulders are out of focus yeah. on everything. They all have terrible forward heart postures. What does that mean? All the curvatures in their entire spine are wrong. Yeah. Some of them are mouth breathers. Yeah. Now they get gum issues and decay issues. How do you relate the dark circles? You said that a few times, but how does that relate the with dark, that? Okay, really if somebody's cyanotic, what do they have? Blood without enough oxygen. Okay. It's back up. It's a sore back up in your face. But Indians tend to have a darker. A lot is what yeah. I noticed. And that's why I'm asking. Am I saying Raj? So, my friend Raj has started a whole huge group in India, and this is what they're doing is they're going to different ways and taking care of these dry problems. Oh, okay. And they're they are Because amazing. my mom has it, I have it, my sister yeah. has yeah. it, so it's almost like so it's not genetic then? It's the epigenetic. So, do you know what the difference between genotype and phenotype is? When I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> so we have chromosomes, and on the chromosomes, we have our genes. The genes make up a very small part of the entire DNA molecule. So we've identified all these genes that have different specific traits. A genotype, that's your hardwired gene. Okay. If you have a computer, this mm -hmm. is a Mac Air, yeah. whatever model. Ah, the phenotype is the result of the software programming. Can you put all sorts of different programs on? Yeah. Sure. You, can, you, can do, you can do YouTube uh, yeah. and Facebook. You yeah. can watch porn. You can watch myotherapy things mm -hmm. all over the place. Yeah. Some people say, start here. Yeah. Watch some videos, and then later on you can go to somebody if you don't want to go. Yeah. So these are kids with dark circles and blood without enough oxygen. Mm -hmm. If somebody's cyanotic all over the place, you worry about it. They're only cyanotic under their eyes. But if they've got dark circles, it means they have bad drainage. So they're more like they have sinus problems. Sometimes they have jaws that are back, narrow mouths. Even before yeah. teeth, the baby doesn't have enough room for their mouth. And the tongue sticks out. Mouth breather, the little lips here, the muscles stick yeah. up. Back up, sinus infections, everything else. You end up with the teeth in the wrong spot. The teeth end up in the balance of forces of muscles. Tongues, lips, these are all back at Darius pictures. Mm -hmm. This is, this book was 67. My son was born in 1980. Wow. 13 years after, and in 85 is when we got him done, but. You didn't see that I, then. I knew it, I just didn't know it as bad. The yeah. reason I got my son treated at five, and I thought I was brilliant. I thought I did the best job. Mm -hmm. I fucked up some time because I should have had it done two years earlier. Yeah. The difference in brain development between three and five, sleeping well and breathing well, is huge. Yeah. So it affects the throat, the tonsils, yep. the eyes, the tongue. Ooh, that's really mm. If your mouth is narrow, if the roof of the mouth is narrow, the floor of the nose is narrow because it's the same bone. Yeah. yeah. Teeth are too far out, not enough room, jaws too far back. This kid's not a thumb sucker. He's wrapping his mouth open so he can breathe. His thumb is an airway. You take yeah. the thumb away, he's still doing it. Yeah. Mouth breather, dark circles. This guy looks like he'd stab you in a dark alley. Mm -hmm. But allergic edema around the eyes, mm -hmm. terrible forward head posture, overclosed on the jaw. He's got a rotation and a tip. People will tip and rotate to the side where they get a headache. Mm -hmm. Why? If I squeeze there, it hurts. Mm -hmm. If you do this, it feels better. Mm -hmm. If you do this, it feels worse. 
So you, you're, you're going to go tend. Makes going you better. To, yeah. Do they know they're doing this? No. No. They don't know. I walk around an airport zone and they're like, so, oh, is the pain in your left temple really bad? How did you know that? It's like, and I, I would tell about 90, 95% of the time I'm right. It's like, I see people, I can't help but look. That's what I do all day long. Mm -hmm. I sit and talk to people. Yeah. And I try to not ask the questions. I like to see it, the picture of that show. Eustachian tube dysfunction, one of the jaw muscles is the tensor palatini. Mm -hmm. One end of it brings a soft palate, the other opens and closes the eustachian tube, stuffy ears. What happens if you can't hear it well through one ear is the other? You so turn your good ear. I sometimes have people put cotton in their good ear so they're not turning their head to the, give them the bad ear. Oh, wow. You know what Dr. Getzel? Yep. yep. Same thing, input output. If they're tipping their head because of not being able to see, like he can put lenses and straighten them out. It's like, yeah. can I do that with people? Sometimes it'll mm -hmm. happen, but you know what? If no. he gets it corrected, most of the time after we finish the math, they don't need the lenses anymore. Yeah. But they need it. I had a people who couldn't walk in my own office if he didn't have them in lenses first. Yeah. They couldn't move. So that. Can you sign it real quick? It's not mine. Put this sign it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can you live close yes, to uh, Nick Rube? Close to me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I buy these books every time I go on to Amazon and if they're for sale. You will go ahead. If they're cheap, I buy a bunch of them. I have another one sitting at home and I'll Bring that one in to take the place of this one. I give them to teachers all the time. Mm. Yeah. First, second, third grade teachers, because now they can recognize this in their kids. And if right. they catch it early, mm -hmm. you can change their lives. Have you seen this flowchart? Mm -hmm. This is Dr. Gary's flowchart all the way through. So we were talking about genes and phenomes and how does it happen? So we have the genes and we have a genotype. And you can get that measured. The phenotype is how those genes are expressed. As so a physical appearance. As a physical appearance. Mm -hmm. So do you know who Harpold is? Harpold did work on monkeys. He put in artificial plugs in their tongues mm -hmm. or artificial yeah. tonsils. And these kid, these monkeys would look more like kids with allergies than, than the kids that allergies look like normal kids. It would change the, how they swallow, cause open bites, cross bites, Smaller lungs and shorter legs on the side of, of the airway obstruction. Now, in my gut feeling, the shorter legs were really a functional change. And if I could stick an aqualizer in, I think I could have corrected them. But it's how the genes are expressed. The, so a phenotype is a, has a lot to do with the environmental effects on the body. And that's what we used to think completely, except now we also know one other thing goes on. We can have epigenetic inheritance so you're when you were born you were born with all your eggs already in your ovaries when your mother was born she was born with all her eggs including the one that made you in her ovaries so her mother epigenetic state will pass on all the way down to you her mom her mom. So mm -hmm. you, it's not the same as genetic. Genetic change, changes take thousands of years. Mm -hmm. But epigenetic is all the space on the genes between. And now they know that you can have epigenetic inheritance, which is a project I'm going to be doing with Kevin Boyd. And I called up my daughter because she's a genetic counselor at UCLA and hopefully she'll help. I haven't heard back from her. <laughs> Actually, I sent her an email. <laughs> so she did. Um, I lost my wife to breast ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. She had a gene called the BRCA gene. It was a gene for breast and ovarian cancer. That's what it causes. And my daughter carried the same gene. So she's already had a double mastectomy. Mm -hmm. She's already had her ovaries out. She doesn't want to pass it to another generation because her grandmother died mm -hmm. of complications of the breast cancer and so did her great grandmother. And she lost her mother. She doesn't want to pass it on. She was a theater major. She worked for Google, did all sorts of stuff. After that happened, she went back, went to Johns Hopkins, did a fellowship at uh, NIH, and now she's a genetic counselor. Yeah. Changed, you know, changed yeah. everything. 
Well, funny thing about genes, back in the Middle Ages, the gene that caused breast and ovarian cancer, in those days, the average life expectancy was 35, 40 years old, especially with women because they died during childbirth a lot. Mm -hmm. People who had that gene didn't die of the plague. The Black Plague mm -hmm. that wiped out more than half of all the people in Europe, if you had that gene, you survived, which meant you could now pass it on. And it turned out to be Ashkenazi Jews, Spanish Jews who got the gene. Mm -hmm. And so they can actually go back and look where they expanded and spread through the environment, you know, through the wow. population. So starting in babies, did you all train with Joy Muller? Yes, I did. I you did, did, and I've trained all of them. And so. you, you've trained them, okay. So we all know it's important to breastfeed. How long did you breastfeed? Uh, nine months, six months. Okay, so we know ideally it's two years. Yeah. yeah. But you know, it's hard when you have a life. Yeah. So I never criticize, I tell everybody, never, no guilt, no guilt, no guilt. However, when you're not breastfeeding, you usually end up with formula. Mm -hmm. Formula yeah. happens to be the perfect food because it's made from cow's milk. If you happen to be a baby cow. <laughs> If you happen to be a baby human, it causes allergies. We get chemical mediators that change. Now, is it all because of this? No, we live in a polluted world. They've actually shown changes in utero before the baby ever gets done. It's the plastics, it's the hydrocarbons, all these things. But we get allergic edema of the nose. When this happens in infants, it changes the cells. So we have two types of cells, basically. One that makes mucus and one that makes serous. With allergies, you make more mucus and less serous. Now, we also have little cells that have cilia that move the crud out. Except if you get too much mucus, the little cilia gets stuck in the muck. Mm -hmm. Everything sticks, and now you get more infection. You get lowered resistance to infection. You don't smell your food as well. You get poor eating habits. Because we've got a billion years or whatever of evolution telling us what to eat and not to eat based on smell. So you get nutritional depletion or weight gain. Opposite sides of the same coin. So you can have two people who don't smell food well, and one gets fat and one gets scrawny. My great uncle was the first man to isolate vitamin B6. Smart guy. He was at Northwestern. He couldn't get tenure because their quota of Jews was filled. So he ended up at Berkeley in Southern California, which was a good thing. <laughs> but uh, my, his last 20 years of life, he also was one of the chief people developing C and K relations they put to the soldiers. Biochemist, nutritionist, hard science. Last 20 years of research was that you couldn't get the proper nutritional value out of your food without gustatory enjoyment. Wow. That the savoring and enjoying the food is an essential part of the nutritional process. We now know that there's taste buds all the way through the gut, not just in the mouth. Mm. But smell is huge to taste. If we don't eat right, we have less resistance. Now, go to France. They eat high-fat meals, and they're skinny. Mm -hmm. You come here, we eat high-carb, low-fat, high-fat, low-protein. We do every kind of diet. We eat McDonald's, and we're fat. What do we eat? We eat fast. We don't savor. We don't enjoy. Mm -hmm. You go to France, they have two, three-hour meetings. We have two, two and three sittings a night at a restaurant. They have one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an experience that you do. So it's, it's not just what you eat, it's how you eat mm -hmm. it. Venous puddling under the eyes. You get stuffiness, you get stagnation. You get a lower oxygen balance, changes your acid-base balance of your body. It interferes with the proper growth from the hormones and things. So all the chemical systems in our body work in narrow pH ranges, so it changes them. So all this changes, and then we come to the next thing. You get adenoid tissue blocking. Mm -hmm. Adenoid tissue blocking leads to eustachian tube blocking. So now you can't and hear well. Gonna, yeah. So now you go into bruxism. Kids will start to brux movements even before they have teeth though. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they're grinding their teeth. They're moving the jaw around to open up their ears. And now when the teeth come in, they get a shorter jaw because of this. So my yeah. wife was back to party was supposed to be here and he was gonna adjust my wife. Morgan, we'll try to finish up a little. I'll yeah. try to go quick. Yeah. Yeah. But this is important. To no, I get it. So, 
tonsillonadenoid problems, responsive turbinates, nasopharyngeal airway obstruction. Mm -hmm. Common thing. All this leads to that. It can cause more sinusitis, headaches, jaw pain, maxillary jaw pain, leads to mouth breathing, tongue's in the wrong position, imbalance of the teeth and tongue, changes the shape of the mouth, malocclusion, up too big, too right, right, left, forward, back, twisted up, everything. You're more likely to get middle air infections with a small airway. You get less oxygen saturation, less exercise tolerance. You get ADD, ADHD, mm -hmm. AD, um, dyslexia, mm. uh, opposition defiant disorder. I call it the bad parenting disease. But you get collapse of the arches. Everything we've talked about today has to do with that line. This is kids. So I said, Boyd, this is adults. Mm -hmm. What happens in the adults? Well, you have a high balls, less room for your tongue, less room in your nose, poor tongue repose, facial grimace when swallowing, and then this weird thing happens. On this side, 80% of the people are female, and they get headaches, neck pain, facial pain, sinus pain, migraines, myofascial pain and dysfunction, fibromyalgia, eye pain, neck pain, back pain, 80% female. And of course, TMJ yeah. disorders. TMJD will put more TMJ. This side, it's 80% men. And they get snoring and apnea, obstructive apnea, dysphagia, and GERD or gastric reflux. Mm -hmm. But they have exactly the same structural problem. Mm. They actually have the same problems with function, but there are estrogen receptors in the TM joint. So women have fluctuating hormones. They have fluctuating hormones. I didn't know that. Our patient, she went into that estrogen replacement therapy, and that's when that started with her job. So when women become postmenopausal, mm -hmm. a lot of problems start getting, get yeah. better, but then they start to get more snoring and apnea and things like that. So you give them estrogen replacement therapy or estrogen and it goes the other way. Mm -hmm. But it's all the same. A guy named Shimshak did some studies in 1998. And what those studies said was people with TMJ disorders, the second one said they have a 300% increase in use of medical insurance in every single field of medicine except obstetrics. Every single field of medicine. Why is that? Because it's leading to the whole system is broken. Exactly. It's wrong. And what was the response of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Pennsylvania, whose records it was based on? Wow. Oh, they made Dr. Shimshan destroy his original data because they didn't want it out because they don't want to pay for it. Mm. So mm. these are all the references for, and then we'll just do a quick scan. So this lecture, this is a lecture I gave at the Anti-Aging Medicine in 1998. So this is not new. Everything I told you, there's not know. one yeah. new thing since I did this lecture in 1998. It's all old. This is my article on sphenopalatine okay. ganglions. It, it's actually, if you go to my spg blocks com. And you go to the third page of the blog, yeah. this is just printed off of that page. Okay. So you can all find it someplace. Yeah. Yeah. Talks about all the stuff we just talked about. This was TMJ has a co-conspirator poor sleep. When Cranio changed the name of the journal from Cranial Mandibular Practice to Cranial Mandibular and Sleep, because I was the quack doing sleep for 30 years, mm -hmm. I got to write the editorial. That and three bucks will buy you a cup of coffee at Starbucks. <laughs> so, awesome. This is a very cool thing at the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute talking about TMJ being the cause of things like sleep apnea and snoring. Mm -hmm. They may have gotten the cause and effect wrong. But yeah. what their study actually says is the cardiovascular and sleep related consequences of TMD disorders. So I'm just going to okay. give you this. Yep. This. Thank you very much. And this, and we're going to do a quick scan okay. just to see what you got. All right. Okay. So this is worthwhile. I know we talked about a little it's, more. It's amazing. This was no. great. This was great. Okay. I'm going to put this on YouTube and send you the link, okay? Not okay. that I'll share it. Um, far away from here from the phone and stuff. So, yeah, I'll put it on YouTube.
Oh, not side. there, over here. Yeah. You can take it off, but it's been like. Well, no, I'm going to try the scan. Oh, no, her tents can be gone. Still on the tent. I'm going to do it when we do the scan. Oh. It helps us. How much is this? Is this the one that the, the, the one that you had told me about this group? This is the one, but I buy more, I bought more of these than anybody else on the planet. And I'm not I I, I can't tell you the price, but I buy a bunch at a time and yeah. if you want one I need it. Nine hundred. I get real one for a whole lot less. Okay, so but what I can't help people stay for like that long. Actually, have them come 45 minutes early and put them on it while they're waiting. Charge them for the attended tens because you're going to check them out afterwards yeah. and then do that with whatever you normally do. Of course, then you're going to have to pay more taxes. For what? Because you're going to pay more you money. Pay more? But it's intended for 45 minutes on top of that. Well, it's uh, that's oh, yeah. Yeah. the time. time. So you have to ask the answer to this how much we get for the next time. It won't be that much because the fees are going to be increased. All those fees are good all the same thing. But I don't know, my brain is so off since I work with Carol. Like I hit even, but I hit in a couple of spots. I'm not like, I'm, I'm hitting even. So I feel like I hit. Okay. I expanded it. That's not enough. But Al doesn't do enough to go No, I'll sometimes use an elf. I'll a place to use it is to round off an arch after I grow it bigger. Yeah. Well, 10 years ago, I would have told you it's impossible to grow it. That was a really hard thing. I listened to Dr. Sidney Bach a few times. I kind of went over my head because I said, well, that's impossible. Yeah. I also used to think it was impossible to change the cans of the mix so on. Yeah. Well, neither one of those things are impossible anymore. That's awful. Actually, I'm going to let you take it off. Do you have the back package for it still? No. Here we go. Put it in there for now. Well, I think they're expensive. Oh, do you have my back? Actually, I bought it. Shop this across. Oh, you did? Yeah. Did it on the back? That's still my pizza. Yeah. Same stuff you do. Give them a smile. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. That stuff they put here. Mm -hmm. You put it on the magnet. Okay. Show me how to do that. You just put it in front of the tooth. Right? Just goes inside your mouth? Like this, right on top. Flat? Oh, no. And around the lip. Okay. 
and the uh, adhesive is only brown, not pink. HST1. Is it home sweet? It's home sweet test. Okay. Is that what you've been doing with the Like close to yeah, I see it. It's not working. Let me get my phone and we'll see what works. Here, hold on. Let me show you. I'll give you. Um, oh, it says password HST star one. Okay, so here's the keyboard. Wait a minute. Got to switch. How do I switch? What's that? Okay. It says HST star one. Yeah, okay. HST. Asterisk in the start, right? Yeah. I think I Oh, now I'll oh, okay. Never mind. Thank you. Go back to your music. Yes. Yeah. 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 So for the data time, it's actually to the time. So that's the big part of the equation. Okay. There's the connection from I'm going to do it. 
you ready to have it on? Put it back yeah, on. Leave it on for a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not on. On should I turn it on? Okay. Uh, right now, I have to cut it off for one second. So I'm just going to show you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't go here. This is a jaw tracer. This is a jaw tracker. So tracker. We're, doing one of, we're doing two studies of the whole topic. Mm -hmm. So the first one didn't work out, so I redid it. And I thought I'd tell you why it didn't work out. So we did this one. So when we did this one, this little hair area here, this is movements of your jaw. This is up and down, front and back, side to side. Tip you went off the screen. You know why you went off the screen? Ah, because you you our, our baseline with your front feet touching. So now when you get your back feet, you're so far off of it, you can see. I'm just gonna go to the next one. I just saved it because that was a mistake and now I won't make a mistake so again. You wanted me to be in my back teeth. I I just needed to set this to you. So where your bite is so far off, it's right now it don't I mean where you can feel what's wrong. So here's here's what we're measuring. This is up and down. Mm -hmm. This is the pulse of the tens. So it's a little pulse. It's not moving it a long right. way. Usually we try to do about a half a millimeter. This is front to back move. So if you're pulsing, here's the joint. Up and down, up and down, comes forward and up. This is side to side movement. So there should be no side to side movement. You have more nerves in your body just to close to the same spot as you can. So now we get closed. So I'm going to switch to this one, which is the same picture. We're going to look at a little bit different mode. And we've got a thing. So here's the front to back movement. That's where your jaw wants to be. From the back molars forward, that's right. this movement. So here's the rest position in space. My back seat? Yeah, the rest position. No. Okay. So your jaw wants to close here. And that if your muscles could close where it was helpful, you would end up over here somewhere. <laughs> to the right. So now we're going to redraw what happens when you close. Okay, so we're going to watch it in slow motion. It's nice to be able to see it in slow motion. Here's your rest position. That's where your body wants you to be. That's the, that's the jaw relax. That's, the teeth that, that's where you should be well, 10 23 and a half hours a day, 20, almost 24, more than 23 hours a day. You got you. Moves around when you're talking, but that's its relaxed spot. It's a three dimensional spot based on head position, but we have you sitting fairly straight, and your posture straight back, and your head back over the hips. So now we just let it pulse. We're going in super slow motion because originally each pulse was a second and a half, so now we're going one foot on the last one. But it's so you're not going to have stable side to side. What so do you mean by that? Like well, when you're pulsing, sometimes you're a little more than oh, right, so, a little more yeah. than the left. So when it contracts, my so now you start to close. Right here, you start to close. The first thing you do is pull your jaw back. And now you're starting to close. Over here, you pull your jaw off to the right side to start to close. So this is your avoidance. You've already touched your teeth. So you're going to try to avoid where the teeth don't fit right. You're going to use all your neck, jaw, and super hyoid muscles to do this. So now we're going to close. Let's see where you actually close. So you don't know where your hat is at. Probably should have said it for once in the lunch. Is this still the tense opening and closing? Where this is the tense. This is when you start to close. You have to pull your jaw back. I have to go back. You have to My pull back. Forward. So now, back. this is where you start to close. That's actually a pulse. I could have turned the pulse off. And then, you're working really hard now to get your jaw to close to here. So now, all these spots where you didn't know where to be, you actually close to the left of all of them. The muscles want you to close up and down straight. You have to close off to the side. I go left and my yeah. jaw when I go. And this is where you bite. So we just do a great 
slide for some more of these different structures that I see. Uh, now we get a new slide for simply open your map a little bit. You slip forward. So ideally, you like your teeth to slide against each other, but they're basically something that you can't reach. This is very discrimination. When you try to close that there, your muscles have a hard time to Didn't like going back there. No, it never likes going back there. You're just aware but of how much it hates it now. No. Uh, so now you start to slide forward. So this line is where your teeth are pushing against each other. You can't get to the other side of that line. So it's like, and here's where you're in best position. So this whole area here, it's filled with teeth. You can't go there. Where your jaw wants to go, where there's teeth in there. So instead, you go forward. And you're way off to the side. So then, if you want, I can do another one and you can probably get a better one. Now you've done it, you got a feel for what you're looking at. But I will show you the next one. So, so this picture is actually a whole bunch of pictures. This is sagittal frontal. Were you biting any of that teeth there? Did you open and close? Yeah. So we're going to just watch and redraw it. I want it to go faster. It's too slow. We'll be there forever. We'll go up to about faster. faster. So you start to open. The first position you open down here. This is velocity. See all this movement? It's not smooth. It should be smooth. If you're going slow and you're sliding off to the side. Now we're going to draw a range of there's a click with a click and a click. Those are when your disc is going backward or upward. As you click, there's a change in direction of your opening. Now you're opening it smooth. You're not in your kind of the end of your movement. And that's probably a little bit of an eminence. But I mean, she's doing a few there where she's sliding off to the side to the end of the opening. Mm -hmm. Now you have to close. So if you close, oh, you're going way off to one side. Because your brain doesn't know how to get back. Now you kind of go back to the midline. Now you go to the other side. Now you go up and back. And that's your spot. So we don't really see the closing place here. When you open, you see the one line, and then if you close, you see the red line. Well, if you watch the red line, it's closing and closing, then you've got to pull back. But if you've got to pull back, what happens to the joint? It goes back and then the thing is pressing back. I'm going to continue, but just erase this and just continue going back. So now you're going to see the next one. I can go open and close on any of you just to see how you open. My jaw wants to stay forward, which is kind of well, my teeth don't meet there. Okay, so now when you open fast, this looks pretty good. You can walk over, you don't see all the detail. You have a smooth opening on closure. Open. You got a clip there. As you go around it, you change directions. Now you stop. You slow way down. Almost to not move it by the time you hit, because that's a protective grip. Like your brain says, slow down, or you're going to have a sore tooth. And you can continue. You get a whole bunch of these open, smooth opening, slows down, immediately on opening the side to the side. And as you close it, then there's this more connected. As you close, you come off to the side, but you again slow down to almost nothing. There's a clip. You don't always close to the same spot. You're going to warn everything your body to close to the same spot as anything else. So we can see what's going on. If you can't measure what you're doing, you have no idea what you're doing. I can either try to get another four or five that looks a little bit more perfect, because that wasn't perfect, because we'd like to see it. Or I can just the 
open and close on one of you. Or we can just call it a day. So does that mean the condo is not resting the right position or in the same position yeah. all the time? It's if it's it closes. Put it here. So here's one of the things in your implementations. Now you put your pinkies in the same way. You can reference yourself by facing forward, open wide, not bite in your back feet. You feel your hand dials going into your ear? Yeah. Do you think your hand dials belong in your ear? No. They don't. Not right in the front feet, but it feels more comfortable. They're not there. Which you think is healthier? Forward, but my teeth are going to crack my teeth. Ah, that's why you have to be rich. You have to make it right. But if you put this in, you still want to go to the same spot. Make sense? Yeah. So this just allows us to actually see what's going on. We like it to close right on trajectory in both planes, and only the open, we like to see what close fast. Anybody feel like your bite's really good? I can show you an open close real easy. You just have to put it in there. Otherwise, you might need to do a four five and see if we can get really good tracing. Sure. Um, I think so, but would I you have to bring my, my Mozilla forward to be it's able to have my feet? Okay, so I have enough so information. Whenever she closes, it doesn't go back to, correct, to the same spot. That's so that means the quad delta should. When your teeth are back on your back molar, you feel your, the condyle pushing into your finger. And if you do, that's not good. So do you do this also for sleep at I don't do this for sleep at well, we do this different appliances.
trying to reposition the draw. So that's fine. If this was our final position and everything else was in good shape, we'd manage it up here. I don't think that would be because we can't see it. So we can also do something. I'll just show you another just see if this straight works out again. Slowly open the program away. Oops, no. Together again, let's see how it goes. Let's see Slowly open the program away. And it closes. We're just looking where you go. So what we know you should do, show up one point straight. We should be on our last line and you should always go to the same spot. See, this is the first one. You open, you start by opening, you bring your drop all the way down. You're disengaging the two people. Okay, you close. You close to more forward, you come in a different plane. That's okay, we'll wait for you the next time. That may have been your friend too, you look like you're not that. Now we have a little slide to the side and put a slot to the corner. Now we'll open a small one and we cap it. So you kind of cap it to here. Make sure cap it's flat. And you'll have your slide to right here on up. Your target so you can't go anywhere well, under that line. You know, you bike it in, you try to bike way off the wall. So, you can't go anywhere like that. And you kind of pull this one to bike that back in. And then we have these slides to the left. That's where your actual bite is. If you've ever hit that spot, you have to bite again. Mm -hmm. So, you have more nerves to close to the same spot anything else in the whole body. When you do this, you don't close the whole thing. Exit, retry. Exit. So here's where you do most of your close. Here's the difference back to close. Here's the difference back to close. That's where you close all the way. That's where your real bite 
We achieve this. Where? Yeah. You make that. So you don't close here or here or here to avoid it. But no, why do you make that? Because that's where your jaw joints are in your ears. Mm -hmm. Your jaw joints belong in your ears. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't consciously think about it, if your brain, brain and your jaw joints don't belong in your ears. So here, this is where your teeth are all the way together. It's way off to the side, to the left, almost uh, half a millimeter, maybe a little more than a half a millimeter to the left. When you tap, you have this big wide area, but one time you won't close to here, and another time to here. So you know how they do this to see if you're drunk? You put your fingers mm -hmm. together? Yeah, if they were checking your jaw, they'd lock you up for life. <laughs> You've got more than half your nervous system is designed just to get your teeth together and stop when you can't do it. Anybody else want to see what their age looks like? Yours is probably the worst. No. <laughs> they have, I think they have to go. Okay. So, um, Little kids at home. Yeah. Your mm -hmm. husband's eating a little, yeah, right? Yes. Is he yes. going to have a breakdown? <laughs> no, I think she's. That's what happens after he gambles the family money away. Let's <laughs> well, divorce him right now. Do you want me to take this off? I want the 200 million from the loto that he won, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and then he do whatever he wants. <laughs> Technically, if you divorce him, you get half. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Right? I'm back on the market. You're right. Oh my gosh. So, this is amazing. Then do we want to close this? Yeah. So pretty much this would be the first, the talk is the first visit of every patient right. in the office. Yes. Then we make them an appliance and they get the appliance on the second visit. And, and you said your evaluation usually lasts for two hours or so? You usually it's 90 minutes to two hours, sometimes yeah. they're running late. They yeah. run on staying on time oh, yeah, because I think everything is important. Mm -hmm. I can do the waxing for you and take off all your facial mm -hmm. hair, or I'll let you take it off yourself. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Terrific. Your muscles are very relaxed. The problem is you keep them right. Do you have the aqualizer? Yeah, I have it. Yeah. You'll feel you like you need the aqualizer more. Who snores here? Anybody? What is it? Anybody snore? Do you snore? Oh, I don't snore. I've never heard myself snore. My husband snores. Know what a clencher feels like? Is it hard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your fingers there. Clench hard. Well, anywhere else in your body. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bad clench. That could be better now. It used to be that. That's what you said. The worst of all was John taking a watch on TV with the muscle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a mile off. Yes, I remember him. All right. Um, Dr. Shapira, thank you so much. I, I mean, we could keep talking forever, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. You're, You're awesome. All right. So, um,